We knew it was coming. In fact, I predicted that the Republicans would play possum, claim that they weren't trying to stop Donald Trump and that he was the presumptive nominee and would only return later, trying to steal the delegates and overthrow the popular vote of the people of the United States. The story's up on Infowars.com. Republican operatives launch all-out effort to unbind the delegates and deny Trump the nomination. Then we have a report out of Idaho, a very, very frightening report, because regardless Regardless of whether the rape report is accurate or not, which evidence points towards it being very accurate, there is a cover-up of the town financing and authorizing the building of a mosque in less time than the town gives local townspeople authorization to build a barn on their property or to put a window in. This is pure Agenda 21 resettling the United States with massive numbers of Syrian refugees that the establishment is keeping secret. Report, three Syrian refugees rape a little girl at knife point in Idaho. And it follows the pattern of cover-up we're seeing in Europe, we're seeing in Australia, we're seeing in Canada, we're seeing across the United States. There's also the giant cover-up of the number of refugees being brought in. I want to re remind folks of our report from even last year and other reports this year. My alma mater, Anderson High School, received 220-plus Syrian and Iraqi refugees in the last year. That's more than they claim all of Texas has taken in the last year. We called other high schools. All of them were taking hundreds. That's just the children. I see Muslims in full hajibs and burqas all over Austin, Texas. We have photographed it. So has Tim Kennedy. The point is, is these numbers are much larger than we're being told. This is all coming up and more. First, David Knight's going to be in, breaking down a whole spectrum of news information. And at the bottom of the hour, I'll be in studio via the road on Skype, breaking all of this down in great detail. There is so much more we're going to be covering. This story is also on Infowars.com. Six diseases that were gone from the U.S. have now returned and migration advocates celebrate World Refugee Day. Until recently, most Americans believe these diseases were gone from our shores for good. Why were we suddenly talking about World Refugee Day in the last few years? Because this is the globalist invasion plan. Remember, the founder of the European Union, top Bilderberg Group member Peter Sutherland, celebrated for his activities pushing planetary regimes has openly told the BBC and others they want to end the whiteness of Europe and other areas. This is open racism, but it's beyond that. It is about having everybody so homogenized, so divided, so conquered, not even letting the groups that you bring in basically be part of a melting pot, that you can then use that as a control system. I know this is divide and conquer. I know that's obvious for those of you out there listening. But remember, we're reaching out to people out there who are not aware of what's happening. And we've got to just keep hammering and hammering and hammering. This is the great game, divide and conquer program. And that they're going to use giant third world populations that they've already helped impoverish and that they control to flood the West, to drive down waste ages, and then to be balkanized political voting blocks to take full control. This is how you checkmate what's left of nation states. This is how you bring in total control. And I'll return in T-minus 25 minutes. It's a big broadcast. Stay with us. Hey, folks, it's Alex Jones here on a very rare and I think deserves semi-vacation, but my vacations are all basically working vacations because the New World Order never sleeps and never stops. And so I'm out here on the fishing boat about to get back in to dock, and then I will race in and get the Skype fired up from my hotel room and be live with you here today. But first off, I want to play a few excerpts that uh, Joe Biggs got and others out on the road uh, talking to folks running around waving Mexican flags. Uh, and things like that saying let's make the United States Mexico again and then we've got the big Trump news uh, coming up Corey Lewandowski is out we knew that a few weeks ago but now it's happened Roger Stone will be joining us with exclusives and so much more so I'll be live here at the bottom of the hour Alex Jones sending you an audio transmission from the middle of the Caribbean Ocean stay with us Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now we're at the anti-Trump rally right down the road for where Donald Trump will be speaking later on this afternoon. What's your name, sir? Renee. Renee. And uh, why are you here today? 
I'm just here to give my support to this community, you know, giving back, showing that, you know, that we're not going to let ourselves get taken over by somebody that doesn't, has so much hate against us, and that it's always looking to blame somebody instead of themselves and showing other ways to, to show how to care about people. So do you live here in this, in, in America? Yes, I do. So why not have the American flag? Because my parents were also here illegally, and, you know, I'm supporting them. They brought me, they brought us, you know, came from Mexico to give a better life. But, I mean, they left for a reason because it's bad, right? Yes, they did. And, but my thing is, and that's why it looks bad for a lot of demonstrators when you, I go to all these rallies, when people wave Mexican flags and not the American flag, if, if Mexico was good, then people would say, but people come here because it's a better life for their family, you know? So don't you think your message would get a, by a lot better if you actually had the American flag to show that you are with America, but you have Mexican roots, you know? I'm more Mexican than American. I'm more Mexican because... So is your allegiance to Mexico or to America? Both. Because I have both nationalities. I have Mexican nationality and Mexican nationality. Because, I mean, I have a lot of buddies that came from Mexico, joined the U.S. Army, fought in combat. Yeah, but they, they got their American citizenship, and they would never be caught dead. They only would have an American flag. But this, for example, at soccer games, at events, mm -hmm. how come we don't do the national anthem? How can we do just do the countries that they're, uh, that whoever they're playing? How come we don't do the national anthem afterward? All three, you know, teams have done it. Why? I'm asking you. Oh, I don't watch sports, so I don't know. Then there we go. So because because I don't believe in sports. I think there's more important things uh, to care about in the world. Like, if people are more concerned about racism, turn off the soccer game, turn off the football games, turn off the basketball games, and actually get out on the streets and do something about it in a peaceful way and bring attention to it instead of glorifying people that are, really don't care about you. I just, like I said, I just, just my way of showing, you know, people that are here illegally, they can't come out here as well. Maybe showing the Mexican flag means that makes them want to, you know what, well, at least there's somebody out there that's speaking for us, that we're under the shadows, that they can't talk for us, you know, because they're afraid of coming out here and getting harassed or arrested or whatever, because... Who are they going to be harassed by? Just by any, any, anybody, just because they don't know how to defend themselves in, you know, talking in English. And they only know in Spanish. So do you support this kind of rally or do you support the violent rallies that you see outside? No, just peaceable. Yeah. I think it's better because that's what we're here to do. We're not here to do go do violence and stuff like that because if we do violence, then, you know, the world will be full of violence. Well, like what we saw in San Jose, California, Albuquerque, all those different places, you know. When someone wants to go see a presidential candidate, regardless if you agree with them or not, Americans have the right to go see that person speak, you know. Do you agree? Correct, I do. And, I mean, I mean... My thing is, is you know, I get upset when I when I witness this stuff, when people go out to these rallies and they're being spit on, cursed at, called racist because they want to go see this guy talk. A lot of them aren't even for him. They're just curious to see what he has to say. They've never seen him in person, but they get spit on, demonized, and I, that looks bad when I see protesting like that, you know? They, don't they cause it to themselves? They wear Donald Trump shirts and they're just going to go out. Yeah, but that's freedom of speech. Exactly. Like you, you can wear Stop Hate Trump. Or I saw a guy in Dallas yesterday that had to shoot Trump. You know, that's his freedom of speech, but you're inciting violence. Yeah, but you're, you're, are you going to go see him for the first time and wear a Donald Trump shirt? Or are you going to go just as a civilian just to hear what he Well, has? I didn't say every single person in there was their first time, but I mean... I'm just talking about in general. Okay, but I see Bernie Sanders people go to rallies with Bernie shirts on. Why are they not? He's a socialist. Look at what's happened in Venezuela. Yeah, it was going... <laughs> True, but I mean, what... What are you going to do? At least, at least we're not here to cause. I mean, yeah, I know. But my thing is, though, is if we're going to have freedom of speech in America, everyone should have the right to wear a Donald Trump shirt, whatever. You have the right to have a Mexican flag on, you know. But at the same time, it should be your allegiance. What always should be with America, because that's where you live. That's where you're able to have a job. Where if you have kids to raise them up. Like I told you, I did it because there's a bunch of people out there that can't come to these rallies because they're afraid, to live under the shadow. Scared Jora Pyle just by even going down the street to go get groceries. Why not support them? Why not have them in our back? If we can do it, you know, and have a voice because we're citizens here, why not support the people that are living under the shadows? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now we're walking down the road, and as you can see, they have taken a blow up Donald Trump doll or a blow up Donald Trump 
balloon thing, put him in a KKK outfit. This is at 15th Avenue in Vernon. It says, make America hate again, Trump. And then you got some dumbass over here that says, make America Mexico again. So why do you want to make America Mexico again? It's what? This is a statement that I'm protesting the anti-Mexican and bigot rhetoric. Yeah, I'm just trying to How is it anti? Anti-Mexican. Yeah, how? Well, he called us criminals and rapists. No, he said that the criminals were coming over, which is a fact. Is it? I mean, some have come over, yes. I mean, if it's not our fault, if you take it the wrong way, if you think that you're a criminal, he said that some are coming over that are criminal. Well, as a politician, you obviously don't stereotype a whole community of people, a whole demographic of people as a certain way. You should know that clearly affects the way those people are viewed and that affects those people personally. Okay, well, I feel affected when the government comes out and says that I should be demonized because one guy went in with a gun and killed a whole bunch of people. So why should I be put into that category why should i be looked at as a bad person because i like guns are you does media do that to use a white male of course oh i'm the white man thing oh you are aren't you yeah got good eyes thanks so why are you guys out here today why are we out here because we don't support donald trump or his racist rhetoric and we don't want that in our country have you ever talked to him before or met him or did you just watch that on msnbc and hear that um i've seen the way he speaks i've seen his interviews I think that reflects the way he thinks of, you know, his policy, so. So what do you think about his temporary ban on Muslims? Temporary ban on Muslims? I think it's very reminiscent of Hitler's um, policy towards Jews back in the day. How many Jews has Trump killed? Zero. So why is he compared to Hitler then? How many Jews did Hitler kill before that rhetoric? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But you're... you're, you're you're already demonizing him and he's done nothing. You don't want to be demonized for something you didn't do. You said you're not a criminal. Mm -hmm. How have I so why would you do that to him? Because I haven't personally attacked or gone after a certain group of people. So neither has he. Yes, I he believe has. that he has through his policy. Has ban on Muslims? Has it happened yet? Is that is that happening? He's proposing it. It's in his policy. Yeah, but that's the good thing about the U.S. government. They have to go through Congress and all that. Do you think those people are going to let it happen? I mean, let's be realistic here. So should we just waste our time while this goes filibustering well, through well, Congress? If he comes into power? How would the face or? of America be if Donald Trump is proposing we have temporary bans on Congress? That's such a bad face, even if it would be stopped in Congress. Do you understand that? Like, Oh, I understand what I'm saying, but it's just like Bernie Sanders is a socialist. Like, if he were to... It, it's whatever you want to call it, but it, regardless... That's ignorance. No, you don't know what. You're just comparing it to socialism, but democratic socialism is, is different. It's been done in this country, and it worked. Yeah. It pulled us out of the repression while FDR was a president. Okay. So why are you here today? I'm here because um, well, we want to send a message to Trump that his ideas do not reflect a lot of ours in Phoenix. So do you support violence outside Trump rallies, spitting on other protesters because you have a different point of view than them? Absolutely not. And we are not. We want to keep this peaceful. We've seen different rallies, such as those where um, they're blocking highways, and we are not standing for that today. We want to send a peaceful message, like her says, that love trumps hate. All right. And I appreciate that. That's awesome. That's the worst thing you can possibly do is when I hear when I hear people come out and protest. I don't care if people protest. What I don't like is when someone goes to a protest and they spit on people and throw eggs at them like they did in San Jose. Yeah, we are trying. So cool. Well, thank you. Keep it that way. That's awesome. Thanks. Have a good one, guys. It appears that the TV watchers of America need to be reminded yet again that any fair play you had expected in mainstream media is dead. Your right to not be lied to by the State Department was executed quietly on the floor of the U.S. Congress on July 2, 2013, when the Smith-Munn Act, essentially an anti-propaganda law signed on January 27, 1948, by President Harry S. Truman, was nullified by the NDAA of 2013. The Smith-Munn Act was created to wipe out the influence of any communist, 
New World Order infiltration in the U.S. State Department with a grip on the mind of the average American citizen. In 1948, following the onslaught of the Nazi propaganda machine and the propaganda being doled out to the American people by the United States Office of War Information and World War I's Committee on Public Information, steps were taken by Congress to ensure that the American people would not be affected by a compromised State Department that could easily twist the information being told to the American people for foreign political gain. Congressional committee members were leery of the State Department because, as House Rules Committee Chairman Eugene Cox said, the State Department was chock full of reds. The Congress of 1948 called for a house cleaning of some folks in the State Department to keep only those people whose first loyalty is to the United States. Fast forward to the Congress in June of 2016, and New World Order propaganda is pouring right out of the State Department in order to complete the New World Order agenda in Eurasia. Kurt Nimmo writes, Advocates of illegal military intervention in Syria to force out Bashar al-Assad signed an internal memo protesting the current Obama administration policy, according to a report posted by the Wall Street Journal. The memo sent by more than 50 rank-and-file officials calls for a judicious use of standoff and air weapons which would undergird and drive a more focused and hard-nosed U.S.-led diplomatic process. It was sent through the dissent channel at the State Department. In addition to increased military intervention by the United States, the memo calls for more support for moderate rebel forces fighting against the Syrian government. There are currently few, if any, moderate rebels in Syria. The Free Syrian Army and the other so-called moderate rebels have functioned largely as a public relations front, while the actual fighting is done by al-Nusra and other jihadi groups supported by Saudi Arabia. And now the sycophantic talking heads are following suit, ignoring the monstrous jihad landing on American shores under the cloak of the Obama administration and blaming Donald Trump for ISIS, the one candidate just as concerned about about the coming caliphate as a majority of the American people. The thing about Trump, though, is that uh, he's the recruiter in chief. He is for ISIS. He is basically working with ISIS yes. to kill us. They are working together. Every time you go after the Muslims and you talk about how they shouldn't come into the country and how they're all a bunch of whatevers, you are saying to ISIS, make another video to show people who are sympathetic to your cause. And don't think they haven't made many videos showing Donald Trump. He is a dangerous menace to the country. I'm sorry, Ms. Behart. Obama has brought in over one million Muslims during his time in office. And according to a Pew Research poll, 60% of Muslim Americans under the age of 30, jihad age, are more loyal to Islam than America. And Ms. Behart, if you're ignorant on what that means, just ask a Muslim. But here's former CIA director Leon Panetta to keep the propaganda moving. Uh, he's not only accusing President of the United States of treason uh, and collaborating with the enemy, uh, but in many ways what he's saying about uh, restricting Muslims from coming into this country, doing surveillance on Muslim mosques, uh, is basically aiding and abetting the enemy at a time when we ought to be unifying, working with the Muslim community to try to protect against future attacks. As we descend headlong into the final stretch of the presidential election, the info war is heating up like a white hot fire poker. The New World Order is manning every cannon on its enemy warship of blatant lies firing on a diminishing population of gullible minds as a growing majority of Americans' eyes are opening to the horrible truth. John Bound for Infowars.com. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. We're live broadcasting worldwide. I'm your host, Alex Jones, and we are going to be here, obviously, until 3 o'clock Central Standard Time today. I, if you're watching us on television, just jumped in the shower about five minutes ago and slid into my hotel room chair here. Uh, my son is a big, avid fisherman. And he begs uh, to, to at least once a year be brought down to the, <laughs> look at my hair if you're a TV viewer, down to the uh, Caribbean where he can have a chance to catch some bigger fish. He likes to go out for the different cells, sail fish, the marlin, stuff like that. And so he just went on a little six-hour tour today uh, with myself and my father. 
and he just caught a pretty good size uh, sailfish. In fact, we just tweeted it a few minutes ago uh, there at the real Alex Jones. Well, folks might be asking, why are you starting the live part of the broadcast today since you got in 30 minutes late with a story about your son out catching a fish? It's what I discussed last week with Tim Kennedy on there, what I've been talking about. We've got to take time out. And, and, and when I preach this, I'm preaching to myself more than any of the worst. We've got to take time out to be human, to, to garden, to hunt, uh, to engage in carpentry, uh, to engage in painting, to engage in learning a new language, to engage in going out fishing, and, and just in involving ourselves in normal human activities and just turning the televisions off. In fact, while I'm here uh, with my parents, in an undisclosed Caribbean location, the next three days, four days, till I come back, we're just not turning the televisions on. I mean, here I am on television slash radio, but we're not turning the televisions on. We're not paying attention to sports. We're not paying attention to anything but the weather and our family, but, but also tracking what the globalists are doing. There's, there's no way, though, that I could take some R&R &R and not spend some of my time tracking what the globalists are up to because they threaten all of human society with the technotronic system that they are with the technotronic system that they're establishing and that they're setting up. Uh, and again, I, I, I'm not really a vain person, but here we are with millions of viewers. And uh, again, I just jumped in the shower now about 10 minutes ago uh, to, to, to get the sweat and the sand off of me. But maybe we can put it up on screen for TV viewers too, a shot of the fish my son just caught about an hour and a half ago. But all of that segueing out of that area, I want to get into the serious news here. We live on a beautiful, fantastic planet. And there's so many uh, incredible opportunities uh, for all of our species, obviously. And it's because there's so much good in the world that I'm so aggressive when it comes to defending human freedom. A lot of people think because I'm bitching and complaining and politically involved that I'm a troublemaker, uh, that, that I am up here only focusing on the negative in this world. And, and it's the opposite. There's so much good, there's so much uh, just you, incredible things about our universe and the mysteries of our universe that I am basically trying to defend what I know is good from what we know historically is absolutely patently bad. But I'm an eternal optimist is the reason I'm on air talking about all these serious issues, knowing that the establishment, the social engineers are doing everything they can to keep you from ever discovering their program. They want you to sleep while they live. To use the allegory of they live and the sunglasses. And I want people to be alive and awake and conscious. That does not mean seeing my worldview. That does not mean agreeing with everything I have to say. InfoWars is not a cult. It is a shared experience of everyone to challenge the establishment norms and to realize that we're in an information war. There is a war on for our minds. And that by awakening to that fact and just beginning to try to get outside the box or discover what is outside Plato's cave, that we begin to find the wider world, that we begin to be able to, to, to basically shatter these paradigms. Buckley's also here with us on a family vacation. And Buckley, I'm sorry, I forgot the passcode on your computer. I was going to surf on it. You're a trooper. Thank you, brother. Uh, again, I slid in here like Wiley Coyote, you know, where he runs off the cliff and doesn't know that there's no cliff anymore. And he looks back and runs back. When we ran out of time getting back in from fishing today, as Rex was out there fighting that fish and some others, it's just so good to see my son so excited and happy too because that's the type of thing he absolutely loves. Okay, uh, but but thank you, my friend. But uh, finishing up with all of that, they don't want to compete with outside ideas. The power structure does not want to have to deal with free sentient open beings. They'll try to build their own world and follow their own destinies because that'll get in the way of a central planner's plan. And I know more and more, I state that simple fact, but it's also a very transcendent fact that they want to control the future of human development and have us completely shuttered and unaware of what's going on around us. That is, that is profound. Now let's get into the news that we're gonna be breaking down today. I knew over a month ago what was going on with Corey Lewandowski, and I'm going to keep my mouth shut. And I didn't just know about it from Roger Stone. I knew about it from other people. 
Um, the reasons you're seeing in the New York Times, the New York Times, of why Corey Lewandowski was removed as the head of the Trump campaign, he's not all the reasons and is not the main reason. And I don't know if Roger Stone even wants to get into this today. He likes to you know, take the high road, but he is joining us at the bottom of the next hour to talk about what this means to Trump land. It's a big deal. And he'll be uh, joining us coming up in about 50 minutes from now. Now, separate from that, we are also going to have uh, a lot of other news we're gonna be breaking down. There's a 30 minute city council report up on infowars.com. We're gonna play some excerpts of at the start of the next hour that deals with this tragedy. Report three Syrian refugees rape little girl at knife point in Idaho. Furious residents accuse council of cover up. Now, watching the city council meeting, reading the transcript of it from Twin Falls, it's clear the same thing that's happened in Austin has happened there. Once a bastion of libertarian patriots, it has been overrun by carrion crows or locusts that had already destroyed California that are now moving on to the next apple. Real original Californians are like Texans or other trailblazers, frontier people, big time. Uh, you know, you take like Tim Kennedy's family, five or six generations, you know, out there as farmers uh, in uh, California. You know, I guess going back to people like the 49ers, the gold rush, those are rugged individualists. But then after people build this paradise, in come all the parasites. They then call themselves Californians, they're really just dumbed down mindless idiots. And then after they've destroyed you, raised taxes on everybody that produces, and, and, and the economy implodes, after all of that unfolds, they then move on to the next target. And that's whatever wealthy independent area that they haven't been in that's, that's being run by libertarians, constitutionalists, and patriots are. And they come in, they steal all the money and the savings, they jack up the taxes, they destroy the infrastructure, they bring in client groups who they can then manage who are totally dependent on them to be the new voting block and to be the new police and governmental enforcement block. This is the new world order um, migrant plan. And they're reporting that this young girl got grabbed by these people led by a teenager and that they at knife point uh, raped her. This has been covered up in Germany, it's been covered up in Sweden, it's been covered up in France, it's been covered up in Spain, it's been covered up in Portugal, it's been covered up in Greece, it's been covered up in Italy, it's been covered up, covered up, covered up in the UK. I'm gonna quit talking about the cover-ups, we all know about them, from Cologne to London. We've shot video of it ourselves. It is, they, the, six months ago, they declared a civil emergency on France's roads, just bedlam, carjackings, murder, robberies, death. Just, just where you're driving along with your family and 500 people just run up and block the road, just grab you out. The men just submit, and everybody just lays down and the raping begins. Listen, I mean, these are people from Muslim countries that have collapsed because they're all killing each other then. I mean, this is insane. But what you find in the city council meeting is they've been approving a mosque in a week when they won't even approve someone putting in new windows on their home under Agenda 21 to harass the citizens. So you can't have new windows or fix your barn it takes months and months and fees and fines and harassment. But the refugees come in, an undetermined secret number, and their mosque is bingo, it's allowed, because you know the Saudis are giving them the money. This is all from the White House through the Saudis, all wired up, all prepared, all set up, all ready. They bring them in, you got people from cultures where if a woman is unattended, whether they be six years old or 50, you can gang rape them, and when you gang rape them, later, if they complain about it, they're taken before the High Islamic Council, if it's in Saudi Arabia or other Wahhabist areas, and they are given the death sentence. They are hung or their head is chopped off or they're given to their families in order to be burned alive. Gasoline is then thrown on them in the backyard and the father and the sons light her on fire. Now, that's a fact. But it's okay. Homeland Security is editing out the 911 tapes of the mass murderer in Orlando and covering up for his accomplices, saying there's no such thing as Islamic terror. And the 911 tapes will not have him pledging allegiance to ISIS and saying more is coming, jihad, jihad. Which the police heard and admit is on there, but you're not gonna get the chance to hear it because they don't want you to audibly hear him with the threat, we're coming to kill you. Now again, 
The reason I'm obsessing over Islamic, 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 Islamic is because I tried to stop the clash of civilizations. I tried to stop the globalists destabilizing anymore, opening the borders of Europe to it. We knew their plan and doing this, but now we failed that level. Now we're here facing the onslaught. They're covering up the real numbers. That's the big story here. I bet it's over a million here in the U.S., folks. They were telling it was 100,000 in Germany until they bet it was 2 million there alone the last three years. The last three years in Europe, it's 5 million. So that's all going on. So they won't let people build their own houses. The citizens are all harassed, but a bunch of other people are brought in. The mosque is being built. There's hundreds of them in the town. They're bringing more in. They're going to Islamify this area with all the traitor Californians that now have come in who want governmental control and who've taken control of the, the city. And I want to warn you, if you're in Wyoming, if you're in Idaho, if you're in you know, places like this, do not let the Californians, and they're not Californians, do not let the body snatchers, do not let the parasites that already took over other states and destroyed them, do not let them. Don't just sit back and let them organize and set up their groups and comply with them and, oh, we're environmental, oh, we're your friends, we mean no harm, we care about the community, we're going to get you federal funding, on and on and on. They are there to make you their prisoners and rule you. They will bring in their client populations to take control of you. And yes, when they and their minions rape your daughters, kill you, you will be called an extremist and a terrorist for even speaking. So of course they're covering it up, even though there's witnesses and all this. Of course they admittedly have brought the refugees in and are letting them build a mosque in one week with no meetings. Of course they're violating your rights, treating you like dog crap, because that's what the new world order is all about. That's what this system is all about. It's all about you're a slave and the globalists are above the law. They get caviar, jumbo jets, and red carpet, and jet copters, and, and five prostitutes tonight, and you get to pay the bill, okay? Just like you pay Al Gore the carbon taxes. The bigger the joke, the more it's rubbing your face, the better for the new world order. So that's what this comes down to. That's what these scumbags are doing. And the minute you realize it's premeditated and it's by design is the minute we'll start turning this around, whether it's Australia, Europe, or the United States, or anywhere else for that matter. So report. Three... Syrian refugees rape little girl at Ninth Point in Idaho. Furious residents accuse council of cover-up. We'll be back on the other side to get into what's happening with the economy, what's happening militarily, uh, what's happening on so many fronts. There is a lot to break down today, obviously. And Roger Stone, the bottom of the next hour. Make it shallow, I agree with that, man. So my dad was married by six feet under right. in a blanket. But by law, they make you do it in the pine box. That sounds pretty good, though. I want my bones, like, thrown in on top of my family's bones as well. That's how all the ancients did it. It just kind of makes sense. Everybody's just in there together, you know? The bones next to your wife's your kids get dumped in on top of you later. Sounds like a way to do it, doesn't it? All one big happy family here on this earth. Okay. Um, we have a video up on Infowars.com. I want to play next hour where the corporate media, it's a mashup, is is intensifying the absolute all-out assault on the Second Amendment. And guys, you guys changed something during the break. I'm getting really bad feedback. No big deal. Kind of fun to do, but maybe it's over here on my side. We're here on the road. But uh, let's figure out what's going on. All right, now continuing with what I was breaking down here, we're also going to be getting into, again, what happened with Donald Trump and Corey Lewandowski uh, leaving the campaign. And we're also going to be breaking down the next shoot to drop in the globalist operations against this country. But briefly, it is you, the listeners and the viewers of this transmission that obviously make things possible. I want to thank you all for that. We're really building the team, building the organization. You see how we're able to have reporters all over the country and all over the world. Uh, and we have the new Tim Kennedy special that's going to be ending later this week. 15% off Super Mel Vitality, 15% off <clears throat> Brain Force, and 50% off Secret 12. Uh, those are things he all takes, including when he's in Special Forces operations. And he says he's never seen any... Uh, brain boosters uh, or uh, other uh, natural uh, enhancements like this work anywhere near what these do. And of course, he's fully endorsed them. But when you purchase them, you can actually experience it for yourself and also know you're fighting the tip of the spear in the fight against the globalists. Now, listen carefully on this plug because this is a, a mistake we made that you can take advantage of. In inventory for living defense, 
I thought the anti-parasite uh, product that had been sold out for six months was about to sell out because for whatever reason, I was given numbers that were uh, much lower than what we had. Uh, we are going to sell out of it very soon, but we had more of it than we thought. And so I thought, hey, I'm going to bring back 25% off on the uh, harmful organism cleanser. 120 capsules, six-week cleanse. I mean, for me, it worked a lot quicker than that, but you just take a few capsules every day. It's amazing. It's got wormwood, everything in it that's known to just flush everything out. And if you go to Infowars.com forward slash newsletter, Infowars.com forward slash newsletter, and you will be able to put in uh, just your email, and then we will send you a promo code today and throughout the week uh, in the articles and videos and uh, newsletter we send out that will give you 25% off uh, on that if you are a subscriber to the newsletter. It's so important with all the censorship and things that are going on that everyone be able to stay in contact with each other. And we don't just send out the latest videos and articles and key intel in, in, in one spot for you to send out our best material every year, uh, every day to people you know. But there's also promo codes and things like that and coupons in there that can save you a lot of money when you're getting amazing products you need and supporting the broadcast at the same time. So InfoWarsLife.com to find all the other nutraceuticals, the 15% off on the Tim Kennedy special, uh, on Super Metal Vitality, on Secret 12, and of course Brain Force. But if you go to InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter and sign up there, it takes about 10 seconds to do. Just put your email in, so you a promo code for 25% off Living Defense. Or just buy Living Defense at regular price, it's still a great deal. At, for $45 at InfoWarsLife.com and start flushing those parasites with Mother Nature. God gave us be back. Stay with us. All right, my friends, Alex Jones coming to you from the road, spending a few days with the family, but quite frankly, wild horses could not drag me away because it is so absolutely imperative uh, that we continue to track exactly what the globalists are doing. I will tell you, though, that it is quite frankly over-the-top fantastical what the globalists are up to and what they're doing. I mean, think about it. Flooding Europe, flooding the U.S. with millions and millions of incompatible people that kill each other continually in their own nations and then lying about their true numbers and then covering up crimes they commit. While there is an article up on Infowars.com today from Breitbart.com that shows six diseases that were basically unknown now in the United States are back and are spreading everywhere. And the government's answer is more vaccines. They know it's the illegals coming in. They know it's the quote immigrants that they're not even testing for TB and bubonic plague and leprosy and everything else. They know that, that's admitted, but they're just gonna blame people uh, who quote aren't vaccinated even though there's no vaccine for some of these things. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. And it's about sacrificing common sense on the altar of global government. And then they act like it's racist and evil and horrible if the UK, Ireland, England, and Scotland, Northern Ireland, try to just be able to vote on their own laws and not have an EU bureaucracy unelected who they never voted to enter. Just like we never voted for the TPP, but now they just say we're under it. Trans-Pacific Partnership that merges with the Atlantic Treaty Organization that say, no, that's not NATO. They have an Atlantic Treaty Organization that is the government of the Euro and the North American Union that meets in secret that we first talked about in my film Endgame that now is out in the open and they told the UK, if you leave, you won't be in the Atlantic group anymore. Now NATO's its army, but it's just the Atlantic Treaty Group. Not the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, but the Atlantic Treaty Group, just all these groups, Atlantic Treaty Group, uh, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, it's just IMF, World Bank, World Trade Organization. And then the communist Chinese, the murderous Islamist uh, Saudis and others, they just go give money directly to the UN. Oh, here's $300 million. Okay, thank you, Saudis. We'll make you the heads of the uh, Human Rights Council. And so now Saudi Arabia can't even get put on human rights stuff for murdering women for no reason and gays. But in this upside down world, the communist Chinese can go give billions to the UN so they get to then say that you know their mass murder and their mobile execution vans are okay and none of that's a problem. And it goes on and on and on and on from there. And now the UK chancellor demands that the British exiters tone down rhetoric then compares them to Nazis. 
but the Nazis are the ones that actually came up with the EU plan. Again, everything is inverted. Then Donald Trump's like, Mexico's got a wall and a fence. They're tough on immigrants. They don't give them free stuff. We shouldn't be doing that. They're dumping their criminals on us. Oh, shut up. You're so horrible. Oh, you're so evil. Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan said Cuba was dumping criminals on us because it was true. That's why 75% of Hispanics in one Gallup poll, it's over 80 in border states, 69 in other Gallup polls, want a wall or want to control immigration because they're the ones on the border with the crime just pouring across. Why do people want to come here from Mexico if the United States is so horrible and is so bad? And then we go talk to people waving Mexican flags in Dallas and they just say, well, that's just the way it is, you know? Yeah, we came here to get away from the problems of Mexico, but now we want to make this like Mexico. It's, it's just so sad, ladies and gentlemen. It's so sad to, to see the due process, the, 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 the wealth of the West being sucked out by these globalist criminals who are now allied with giant third world hordes who aren't even our enemies, but through their brainwashed ignorance are being used as a weapon. The globalists are the weapons of everyone on earth. They're coming after everybody with their Gardasil shots. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back live now into the second hour. Our crew is doing a great job there in Austin, Texas. I am on the road coming to you live uh, at a workcation. Uh, I tend to do staycations and then do accounting and research and rollouts of new programs and things like that on my staycations. A few times a year, I have a workcation that generally involves uh, going to the mountains, uh, camping or taking my children deep sea fishing. And that's what I'm doing here. Uh, but wild horses could not drag me away. So thank you for putting up with me being on the road via Skype and the crew, of course, putting up with that as well. I know that can be a hassle. All right. The New York Times ooh, reported that Corey Lewandowski was going to be uh, kicked out. And, and of course, the Trump campaign today came out uh, and said that uh, Lewandowski is out. Uh, of course, we knew this uh, pretty much a month ago, and I was sure of it two weeks ago. And not just from Roger Stone, but from others were, were, were let on uh, and into the reasons for this, led into that. I am not going to obviously get into the reasons I was told. It, it's a distraction from the overall Trump campaign, uh, but this is a good deal. This is an exciting thing. Uh, this is very, very positive to have uh, Lewandowski out uh, I'm not an enemy of Lewandowski, but I will tell you that Lewandowski did not like InfoWars. Uh, and uh, it's not even that big a deal for us to get Donald Trump on the show, uh, but it would be Lewandowski who would literally, when it was time for Trump to come on, it would not happen. Lewandowski would insert things in the middle to stop that from happening. Uh, and basically uh, giving Trump the advice uh, to do a lot of things that ended up being the few disasters that Trump has had uh, in his campaign. Now, I'm, uh, I'm not going to talk about Lewandowski anymore until Roger Stone joins us. My reason for having problems with Lewandowski is, is not the fact that uh, he was basically trying to steer Trump away from more populist type activities. My issue with him is the fact that he doesn't know how to raise money and the fact that, uh, let's just say, a lot of the ways that some of the money was getting spent was not the wisest, according to people that know what they're doing. Now, I'm not going to get into that anymore, but I knew all about the Lewandowski thing, just to let you know how inside baseball InfoWars is with taking this country back. We'll see how much Stone we'll get into today. I have a sneaking suspicion because I saw this morning, within minutes of it, you know, going up that Lewandowski was gone. I texted uh, Stone and I said, Will you please come on today? And he said, Absolutely. Big news in Trump land. Uh, would love to. And so I don't know, because I haven't talked to Stone, exactly what his views are on this overall at this point. I just know that when Stone is able to get his views, former head of the campaign, in there and, and, and able to get his business partner, Manafort, in there, that's when good things start happening for Trump. Uh, so I know for a fact Roger Stone is anti-New World Order. Roger Stone knows all about the globalist. Roger Stone has told me on air and off air, concurred with what... Um, people like Dr. Corsi has said on air and others off air to me that, Alex, you just don't get it. He was Alex Jones before you were born. 
And when the first movie star tells you that, you're kind of like, yeah, yeah, right. And when the second TV star tells you that, you're kind of like, yeah, yeah, right. And then when a major billionaire tells you that, you're like, oh, really? And then another major person tells you that. This is before Trump was running. I'd be out at dinner with somebody or I'm talking on the phone. They'd say, hey, what do you think of Donald Trump? I'd be, isn't he kind of like liberal because he lives in New York and he's kind of conservative on trade, but... Uh, you know, he's a big casino owner. I mean, yeah, Donald Trump, flamboyant, host of The Apprentice. And they'd say, listen, buddy, he's, you're, you're the underground. I was told this by two different people, this particular statement, because I guess this comes from Trump. You're the underground. Alex Jones is the underground. And Trump is to the, to the mainline population. But just know Donald Trump is dialed in. And by the way, you should know Donald Trump's dialed in. And by the fourth time you're told this, you're like, what's going on with Donald Trump? And they're like, you'll see. So it's like Fight Club. There's two rules about Fight Club. Number one, don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> and then number two, don't talk about Fight Club. So there's a lot of stuff I can't tell you or get into. But I know this, nobody in the establishment acts like this. Nobody behaves like this. And Trump wouldn't have been going around behind the scenes for the last six, seven years telling people he wants to take on the New World Order and get ready. Generals, Green Berets, Navy SEAL commanders, uh, famous people that took on the Clintons, famous people that took on the New World Order, famous people that have taken on the Saudis. 9-11 uh, whistleblowers. Oh, yeah, folks, they're scared of Trump because they pulled up his data file that the NSA has whenever he started to run. And they went, oh, my God, he's been organizing a move against us. Yeah, that's a big secret. I'm going to go ahead and let you all know that because the system knows. So I'm not letting a secret out, okay? But I'm here to tell you, I was led into this fight club style. Like, hey, what do you think about Donald Trump? You know, he might run for president. I'm like, what? what? Donald Trump? Yeah, I don't pay attention to pop stuff. You know, oh, well, you better pay attention to this. Why would Trump way down the line, way before this even happened, already be getting messages out? And then basically Roger Stone, I got contacted by folks. Hey, Roger Stone wants to come visit with you. I'm like, oh, yeah, the JFK writer, the former Politico, you know, like the Nixon, you know, operative. Yeah, okay. The Reagan operative, sure. And then I had that meeting for about an hour or two because <laughs> the real stuff wasn't the radio show when he came on a year ago. The real stuff was behind the scenes. And I'm like, okay, I'll believe it when I see it. And then I started just seeing all this. So that's why they're so scared of Trump. You want to know why they're scared of Trump, folks? That's why they're scared of Trump. He's totally dialed in. He doesn't want war with Putin. Um, he wants prosperity. Uh, he wants the Second Amendment. He wants to control our borders. He wants to bring immigrants here from every country that have skills, that want to work. And you know what? Immigrants, the ones that want to work and the ones that aren't criminals are the best people we got. I'll just be honest. Anybody that's run an operation with 50-something employees, you know, over the decades, I, I can tell you right now, on average, you've got to go through more native-born people. I'm talking third, fourth, fifth generation, whether they be Hispanic, black, white, it doesn't matter, to find hardworking, focused people that aren't little pampered babies. I mean, my, you know, my grandfathers were a lot hardworking, even compared to the way I am, and, I, and, I'm, a, and I'm a workaholic. So the cliche about immigrants, whether they be from Russia or Mexico or China or wherever, that they're hardworking, well, yeah, they've come from horrible places. Their parents had to work hard. They appreciate stuff. They want to actually get stuff done. On average, the cliche, the uh, stereotype is true. But that's the group that comes here legally that wants to work. You also have criminals running from the governments and running from courts all over the world that can get a visa here quickly and get on an airplane and get here and get a bunch of free stuff. You can't just have all these immigrants pour in and then give them free stuff and have the Democrats organize them into a bunch of, you know, race baiting, race based, third world Ku Klux Klan people. I mean, I don't like the Ku Klux Klan because they're a bunch of ignorant gang members screwing with everybody. And I sure as hell do not like Mexican clan, the black clan. I mean, it's all the same crap. And I'm just done with it. And the Democratic Party are a bunch of scum. And the Republican leadership are a bunch of trash who have combined up as a team to try to block Trump. And they're getting their butts kicked. And they are apoplectic at this point. Now, shifting gears. 
What's their plan B at the UN? What's the plan B with the globalist? Overrun Europe, overrun Russia, overrun the United States, overrun Canada, overrun Mexico with third world populations, overrun Eastern Europe with third world populations out of Asia and, and the Middle East and Africa till it all just unravels, the wheels come off, and the IMF and World Bank come in with fiat money to bail everyone out. Oh, they've already got their people in control of all the major governments. They've already got their people in place of all these systems. And so then when they come in with a bailout, it's really a payoff to the paid off minion who signs all the resources over to the globalist. Now, usually you're already four or five levels into this. The globalists already own all the resources. They already own all the major parties. They've already got everything paid off. They already take their loan money that goes into the country and right back out to them. And then it's just a process of we'll bail you out more for more social control. We'll bail you out more if you take these vaccines and get sterilized. We'll bail you out more if you go into our social engineering. And now they're talking about the precariat, the evil uh, proletariats that are precarious, that have been made dependent. They were promised a, a service economy instead of an industrial economy. But now they have no economy. And now they admit what we've always known. Oh, give the guy a Pulitzer Prize. He's a professor that went to Bilderberg last week. Two weeks ago. Oh my gosh, he just came up with a plan. Oh my gosh, we'll give the public welfare, everyone forced welfare, even if you don't want it, to include you in the fraud, to make you dependent, and then we can social engineer them once they're living off a paycheck we give them. And we'll have national service and no one can complain because everyone is in a big collective. Oh, a Pulitzer Prize, a Nobel Prize. He just came up with an idea to make us all communist and then give us enough money to barely survive to social injured to control us. Oh, this has only been done hundreds of times. But they're reselling the same fraud as new, boxing the same stinking vomit as, as, as fresh, you know, delicious pumpkin pie. That's how dumb they think you are. Google the precariat. Oh, it's a new thing. Everyone in the world, Europe wants to do it. The Republicans want to do it here. Everyone gets a monthly check or a little ID card that tracks everything you do, a little government credit card. And then they admit in Europe they want to move where your paycheck is also put on that. And then everything you do is tracked. And if you're not a good globalist, they turn your card off or they take money directly out of it. And the police have little swipe wands that at a distance just take the money out, making you totally dependent in a virtual cashless system where you're nothing but a bunch of zeros and ones reducing the physical world into a digital world so they can then capture and fully control us. And we walk around with goggles on or, or squat like apes while Zuckerberg walks amongst us like a god. But they sell it like a wonderful new uh, thing. Did you hear? You're going to get a free check. Oh. But then they admit it's to control you. 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 In the new precariat, they admit it's to control you. They admit the military governments to make it. We are back live. Alex Jones here on a workcation uh, with my family and children. And we've been doing some successful fishing here on this beautiful planet today. Now, let's get into... Three different videos are extremely powerful ahead of Roger Stone joining us. Number one, Jeff Sessions, Senator Sessions, who is uh, probably going to be, is going to be, unless minds are changed, the uh, VP of Trump. You heard it here first a month ago. He is going to be breaking some key intel down that you don't have a right to just come here. America isn't just some evil place that everybody has a right to come here and get free stuff and 10,000 Chinese women, you know, every week or so fly in. It was every month. Now it's every week to have their babies for free. People go, why are you against Chinese women? I can't go to China and have a baby for free. I mean, this is just crazy. This is an attempt to bankrupt the country, folks. You see it happening. And then we have the Twin Falls. It's a 30-minute video, but it's folks getting up saying, you're covering up this rape. And you're giving zoning to this mosque, but not giving us zoning for our houses. That's how they operate. Zoning can destroy you. The power to tax is the power to destroy. Then there is a State Department video that I want to get an article written about. This hasn't gotten any attention on how the U.S. government gets the refugees. It's titled uh, USA in Europe. That's, that's the State Department TV channel or TV program. And it's crazy because they're just in there breaking down 
and, and I've read about this, it's incredible. The UN Refugee and Borders Panel, headed up by the founder of the EU, who took this junior position a few years ago, uh, Peter Sutherland, because it's actually the key position, to then use refugees to break down countries, create precedents that you've got to let them in, and then basically just get rid of borders entirely. This is the end of nation states. This is the weapon system. We don't hate the refugees individually, but the ones from Middle Eastern countries are meaner than rattlesnakes. But the average other refugees aren't that bad, except they're used as political weapons once they get here and suck off the dole. And so that video is coming up after Stone leaves us, but it is incredible. They admit, no, the UN just tells us. That's why it's the same thing in Europe where they keep the numbers secret, where they distribute them out, you know, how they respond, how they keep the crime statistics secret. This is a shake and bake operation. And by that, it's, it's, it's pre-planned, it's pre-packaged. Just add milk and heat. I mean, it is, it is just add money and just add a country and you got it done. This is pre-packaged, formulaic, a globalist program. That's how we know their next move every time, folks. It ain't hard. It's like having eyeballs and being able to see it happen. That's all you got to do is wake up out of the trance, and then you'll go, Alex isn't that smart. I'll be like, exactly, exactly. I'm not that smart, but I'm red-blooded, and I'm not an idiot. I can read battle plans against me when I see them, okay? I mean, it's, that's what I'm so sick of. I'm nobody. Why do I have instincts? Why am I upset? Why do I want to fight? Why do I care? I guess because my ancestors built countries. That's why. That's the spirit of the West, being willing to stand up and build something and fight for it. Not just be like, eh, because people are smart from other countries. And they'll fight with each other over petty stuff, but not over big ideas. Or they let other people give them the big ideas. We have the big idea. It's the Renaissance. And it's nobody's idea but humanity's. Renaissance just means growth and free will and free association and liberalism. That's why they call themselves liberal, because they're not. That's the big secret. They're the opposite. They're the controllers. They're the fascists. They're the centralizers. They're the enemies. And it's up to true liberals to fight these bastards. Now let's go ahead and go to Senator Sessions, a true patriot, a true nationalist, a true liberal. Here it is. So what, what does that mean? Do you, are you going to um, look specifically at certain countries? Are you going to look at certain religions? How would that actually work in practical terms? Then I think you first you look at background. Look at the countries where uh, we have an, uh, of this 580 terrorists, uh, about 95% or so are from Islamic countries. So, for example, give me some names of countries that you would look at first. Well, I, all I can tell you is the public data that we have indicate that there are quite a number of countries in that region that have s s sent uh, a large number of people that have become terrorists. And so... so are you talking about Saudi Arabia? Or well, are you talking about... It all depends. A lot of it's on population. Iran. Like Pakistan has a number of uh, people from Egypt, uh, Syria, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan. Um, so you would Yemen. consider, and Mr. Trump would consider, banning immigration temporarily completely from those countries? Not completely. I mean, you, you got diplomats and business people who have been traveling for a long time, but tightening up that, pausing on the normal flow here until we get a, a good data base that the administration has refused to give us and protect the American people. That's not unreasonable. You don't have a constitutional right to come to America. We respect your religion in this country. We will defend your right to free exercise of religion. But a person with an ideology that goes beyond normal religion, that it's believes right, you can kill gays, that kills people. Who all right, we'll be back. It takes conservative patriots to now defend gays, not the liberals, because they're the fake liberals. We're the real liberals. We'll be back. Stay with We're us. We're on Mom's the march. Show. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central. By the way, we return weeknights, 7 o'clock Central, with InfoWars Nightly News. Then, of course, I return Sundays with a Sunday broadcast, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. And I'm looking to add some more live weekend shows. I mean, and a little bird told me somebody might be doing one in the future uh, here on Saturdays and Sundays because there's really a, a, a missing niche on the weekends as so much happens politically, geopolitically with this global quickening that doesn't get covered. So that's why I do the Sunday broadcast as well. Uh, again, David Knight would be riding shotgun with me today, but he is under the weather. Uh, not too bad, I'm told, but let's still uh, be thankful for David Knight and all the great, great work he is doing. Uh, coming up after our guest leaves us, I'm going to go back to Vice President Sessions, I mean, Senator Sessions, 
saying, look, you don't have a right to just come here, especially from these Islamic countries where 95% of the terror comes from there. By the way, it's more like 99.9%. .9%. You got hundreds of thousands getting killed by these people, folks. Okay. And notice Saudi Arabia didn't take one refugee, even though they financed the civil wars that caused them. So Saudi Arabia takes none, all these other countries take none, and then we're here getting lectured that millions aren't enough for Europe and hundreds of thousands here. It is absolute, total, and complete horsemaner. And I personally am tired of it. Nico Acosta just texted me, said we have a drudge link on one of our uh, top stories uh, right now. So we'll put that up on screen for TV viewers uh, who are watching at Infowars.com forward slash show and cable systems in places like Houston, Texas, and New York City. And uh, there is the link. DOJ replaces uh, Allah with God in edited Orlando terrorist transcript. Uh, yes, well, they told us that they were going to edit out uh, when they released the 911 tape, the local cops listened in Orlando and said, yeah, he pledged allegiance to ISIS and the jihad. That's how we knew 10 hours into it, it was a jihad attack. The feds were covering it up like San Bernardino for two days. Well, this time the local cops just said, no, it's on 9-11 call that this is a jihad. So they said, we're gonna edit out those parts when it's released. Since when does Homeland Security have control of that? That's all coming up after Roger Stone leaves us because Corey Lewandowski is out. I know that we need to move forward and forget about Lewandowski, not have that be a distraction, but it's also important to know now why this is so much more positive because once uh, Roger Stone's former business partner got in there, things got a lot smoother. Stone, of course, was the former head of the campaign, but felt he could do more on his own, so left a year ago, and he's gonna be joining us here in one moment. Before I go any further, though, I had told people we we're gonna sell out of ancient defense, uh, and we did, but we got more in. I told folks we were gonna sell out of uh, living defense, which is the ultimate parasite detoxer with 27 known ingredients to flush out safely and healthily parasites, you name it. From little organisms right up to worms, you name it. Well, we would have sold out except they went, oh, sorry, we gave you a glitch. We had over a thousand bottles extra than what we thought. Well, here's the deal. I'm gonna bring back the 25% off for this until those are sold. But you've gotta sign up for the newsletter so we can stay in contact with you with breaking news and information. Infowars.com forward slash newsletter. Just put in your email, create a new email. It doesn't matter. But it's key because we send you the best audio, the best video links, the best news articles, the most important information we think is the most powerful info and research we produce every day to you in one email, seven emails a week, sometimes a few more. But this is key to send on to others and to share and to print off. But within it every day are promo codes, sometimes up to 50% off. We're about to give you a promo code today that's 75% off. Now it's 25% off on living defense while supplies last. It should go a day or two, but I, I promise to sell it out to a certain point and then cut it off, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. We will send you a promo code for 25% off today. But beyond that, I am put, I have put out a limited edition Hillary for President shirt that's taken the country by storm. We're coming out with one more design after this, and then that's it. But this limited edition, we've got like 2,000 shirts left. I want to see more of them out there. There's already tens of thousands across the country. There's over 50,000 out there. We want of this design. When these are gone, they're gone. One more design's coming in, and then I will never produce another again unless it's a Hillary uh, for Mars. We put her in a you know, rocket and shoot her to Mars. Or maybe impeach Hillary, God forbid. You know, maybe that sure, but no more Hillary for prison. It's already a meme. Everybody else is copying it. That's fine. You can get Hillary for prison and beyond 2016, 50% off the first shirt, $9.95, and the second shirt is $4.95, 75% off. That's what the shirt cost me. And by the time I deal with everything else, it's a lost leader. The first shirt's $9.95. The second shirt, if you choose it, is $4.95, 75% off. But the promo code is only sent to people that are InfoWars Insider subscribers. InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. You find the link to the newsletter on InfoWars.com. Put your email in, and boom, you get different promo codes. Usually it's 10% off every day on one item, sometimes 50%. We've never done 75% off. 75% off right now, and this is how you fund the InfoWar at InfoWarsStore.com. So take advantage of that, 25% uh, off Living Defense, 
promo code if you're a newsletter subscriber will be sent out today and the great part is if you're already a subscriber to the free newsletter it's already coming to you today so take advantage of that but 75 percent off the hillary for prison shirts and we also have the tim kennedy special forces special 15 percent off super male vitality brain forces secret 12 together or individually at infowarslife.com infowarsstore.com is the umbrella site and while you're on infowarsstore.com get one of roger stone's books or both of his books or his jfk book we sell three of his books at infowarsstore.com as well the clinton's war on women and the bush crime family available at infowarsstore.com now Roger Stone joins us. Hmm. Having dinner with him many times, strategizing over the phone. Uh, it's just been simply amazing. That I've ever seen. That was a while back. I've, I've cut back to like 10, 12 hours a day. This guy literally works 18 hours a day. And he says, well, I did, I said, I worked hard at other campaigns, but this one's so historical, so epic, I can't help it. This guy is amazing. And, and so he's here. Everything he's told us to turn out to be incredibly active to tell us what the firing of Corey Lewandowski symbolizes, but moving on where the Trump campaign's going, how we ensure this maverick patriot ends up getting in the White House. So Roger Stone of StoneZone.com, thank you so much for taking time out. Today. Well, Alex, as you can imagine, I have several hundred press calls today uh, from across the country uh, and everybody, which is very typical of the mainstream media, very focused on process, very focused on the who shot John of political intrigue missing, I think, the larger implications. So I have elected, in all honesty, to lay low. I'm not going to take any press calls today. I'm going to do all my talking right here at Infowars.com. Uh, as you know, I've said for some time that the historical track record of presidential campaigns that had internal divisions and factions is not good. Eight years ago, when we had uh, a the uh, uh, Mark Penn versus Mindy Grunewald fighting within Hillary's campaign for president, I think, frankly, it doomed them. You need to have the unity of command. Uh, a campaign cannot be a democracy. Uh, it has to be a dictatorship. And all power must flow from the candidate. The candidate's the ultimate boss. The candidate has the ultimate authority. Uh, and he needs to delegate that to one person, not a committee. So um, I have every confidence in Paul Manafort's ability to guide or help guide the Trump campaign uh, to uh, success, to victory. I also think that you are going to have um, a, uh, a smoother flow of information to the candidate. Donald Trump is a, a thoroughbred with great instincts, particularly great instinct for the jugular. There is nobody better at counterpunching. Uh, and we're at a time in the campaign, Alex, that his entire issue has been validated. The fact that they are uh, redacting these 911 calls to take out the references to ISIS and the leader of ISIS proves that Trump's criticism of the president of roughly a week ago is right on the money. They, they have another agenda. They will not even mouth the words except for when they absolutely have to. Wow. Well, thank you for giving us this exclusive. Uh, Roger Stone, please, you've got the floor. We're going to skip this network break. Talk about issues that held things up if you can, but I agree we should just move forward. But folks do want to know, since you're making a statement, and then let's move forward from here. But what, what great news to, to know that your business partner in, 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 in your political group uh, has been you know, helping the Trump campaign, but is now the head of the campaign. You, of course, formerly the head of the campaign. Uh, I have complete trust in you and Mr. Manford. So this is very exciting. Well, Alex, and I've said this to you before, both privately and on the air. This campaign is not about Corey Lewandowski or Roger Stone or Paul Manafort or Alex Jones. This campaign is about our last best chance to save the country. The Republican establishment's doing everything possible to undermine the candidacy of Donald Trump. They don't respect the democratic process. Attention, Paul Ryan, we had the primaries. You lost. Mitch McConnell, you lost. The party has selected its nominee, at least on paper, and in reality, very shortly. Uh, what the Republicans don't understand is that Donald J. Trump and the Trump revolution is bigger than the Republican Party. 
reaches beyond the Republican Party. Uh, in many places, I think the campaign was hamstrung by uh, dual authorities uh, and countermanded orders. Uh, but I don't think it's productive to go into a long discussion of everything that was wrong with the campaign. Uh, I think the campaign has achieved historic things uh, under uh, under the leadership of Donald Trump. Uh, and uh, you certainly saw in the New York, Indiana, uh, California, Pennsylvania, California primaries, uh, a smoother running political operation. There's no question the Trump camp is playing catch up ball. They need a communications director. Uh, they need a uh, they need additional field staff. They need additional party professionals. But now I think the deck is cleared to do that and to build a smaller, leaner, more guerrilla oriented campaign that is still large enough and fast enough to compete with the well-oiled Clinton machine, which, as you know, is a massive, massive biography, a uh, massive uh, political machine. Absolutely. I don't even do any research on their biography, though. And boy, is it a nightmare. Roger Stone. I, I totally agree. We should move on from Lewandowski. I have nothing against Lewandowski other than every time I saw major mistakes being made and him up there bragging about things on TV, it seemed to be about Lewandowski. Though every time we're talking about Trump with you on, you'll never even talk about yourself. So, I mean, certainly he was putting himself, I think, in many cases, you know, in front of the campaign. Uh, I think he was a bit entitled, and I'm sad to see that happen, but it's good news that he's gone now, obviously. Now, I made a prediction that's coming true. It wasn't hard to predict, but obviously we want Trump to be the presumptive nominee, and we want to just go ahead and put that to bed, as we did months ago, and say, okay, he's won, you know, these states. You know, he's the guy. The problem is, is that I know how these Republicans work. They're playing possum, these rhinos, Paul Ryan and others. And I said, wait till they get right up, you know, closer to Cleveland. They're going to come and try to defect again and, you know, shoot Trump down and pull some scam. They know they're losing the battle by being out in the open because you put stop the steal out, millions coming to Cleveland. But I said, we got to come to Cleveland. We got to be there. I expect some more shenanigans, some more fiascos, some more hanky panky because these losers think they're God and, 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 and think they can step in front of the Trump bullet train. Now, as you know, it comes out they've got a stealth campaign going uh, to try to uh, steal the delegates again and, and pull something. Now, obviously, it's going to be ill-fated, but it shows how incredibly piranha-like and arrogant and disconnected they are uh, that they're doing this. So let me ask you, what is your view on this? What do we do to counteract it? Well, Alex, I think you're absolutely right. I think that there is uh, there's trouble afoot uh, inside the convention hall as well as outside the convention hall. So let's talk about both. Uh, I still think in the end, uh, Manafort is the master of campaign rules uh, and credentials uh, and the platform. Uh, he's a superb vote counter. And whether or not this little insurrection, which the media themselves reports uh, is, is uh, being carried forward by dozens, dozens of delegates, not hundreds, not thousands, but dozens, I think it is ill-fated. Uh, I don't think it's going anywhere, but it is incumbent on the Trump campaign Keep a very close eye on it to make sure that you don't get a runaway convention. The idea that you would pass a conscience clause of the uh, uh, to the rules committee that would allow delegates to opt out of their party rules based commitment to vote for Trump on the basis of the democratic process and the way the people voted is outrageous. You, in essence, would be saying to the Republican primary voters, your views don't matter. We don't care what you think. You, you voted for no reason. You wasted your it vote. This is our conscience. Our conscience trumps your conscience. It's outrageous, uh, and it and it's it's arrogant. Frankly, it is the arrogance of the ruling class of the Republican Party. Meanwhile, it's the creme de la creme of arrogance. It's the cream of the cream. It really is. Uh, meanwhile, in a story that was really broken here on Infowars before anyone, the city of Cleveland seeks to gag. Uh, and uh, and destroy the First Amendment rights of those who wish to go to Cleveland to uh, demonstrate in favor uh, and protest uh, these Come hell or high water, I'm coming. Come hell or high water, and everybody needs to be there. Well, I, I'm going to be there as well, but uh, I can now report two things. One, that the city is insisting that, the, uh, that all demonstrators, left, right, middle, Black Lives Matter, Infowars.com followers, Trump supporters, Citizen for Trump members, uh, MoveOn.org will all be in one area 
unsegmented. There will be one microphone. The city will control that microphone and you can apply if you wish to speak. They have already uh, given permission to speak to a number of extraneous groups that don't matter. Uh, so, yeah, they're going to fill it with like underbenchers that don't even matter their own people. That is, oh my God. And they won't, they will not let us, they will not let us let's control us. government channel. Yeah, they will not let us have our own rally. They will not let us have our own march. They actually gave the rally site that, that we had applied for to the Westboro Baptist Church. Um, they don't seem to have they much trouble. around and scream anti-gay stuff and then claim they support Trump. Yeah, exactly. Now, this is, look, let's be very clear. The city of Cleveland is a Democratic machine stronghold. Cuyahoga County is a Democratic machine stronghold. This is a recipe for violence. This is a plan to achieve violence. The whole point of, of our people applying for a permit would be so that we were engaged in a lawful activity and that the local them. police would, would defend us. Would, would protect us. Now, in this configuration, nobody is protected. Uh, it, it's a sure recipe for a combustion, for violence. Roger, I think, I, I, I personally come to speak, you invited me a while back, it's all set up. I mean, I, I have to sue them or something because clearly this is a recipe for chaos, a recipe for disaster, putting us all in one giant pin together. What psycho would put the Black Lives Matter cop killing machine with the communist in with all the libertarians and patriots and the bikers for Trump. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, they're going to start a fight. They're going to get their butts kicked and they're going to claim we started the violence when we've been for peace the whole time. The whole time you said peace, 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 it must be peaceful. They blame you claiming you're coming to harass delegates. These people are engaged in criminal conspiracy. And I'm shocked that the city of Cleveland is this outrageous. This is insane. Yeah, what's even more interesting is that the ACLU has now agreed to represent us, a group of, 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 uh, of organizations that are challenging these gag resolutions. I'm actually advocating a, a demonstration uh, in Cleveland in the coming days in which everyone who is a Trump supporter wears an actual gag to make the point uh, to, the, uh, to the public uh, that this is a setup. This, this is a pre precipitation for violence. I just had a great idea. Let's just fly in for two days in like a week or two and just have an impromptu demonstration at some city park we announce. We all wear gags. I bet a thousand of my listeners, 2,000 will show up. If you plug it, tens of thousands. And I bet Drudge will link to it. We all show up for a demonstration ahead of Cleveland with gags in our mouths and see if they arrest us for that. Uh, great minds uh, work alike. Uh, yes, I think it's a great idea. Let's do it. You set the time, sir, and, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll bullhorn it. We'll fly in. We'll just do a 48-hour deal, you know, get there for a day, war, war game it, you know, ha have a deal, and then just uh, pick the spot. We'll show up and exercise the First Amendment silently. Oh, my God, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be sensational international news countering this attempt. H how arrogant, though, does this show the Democrats are in Cleveland? Yeah, no, it, it's extraordinary. This is clearly unconstitutional. The rules they have handed down... Uh, they they provide for one march route that can only last 50 minutes. All marchers jumble together. Black Lives Matter, move on, John Birch Society, Citizens for Trump, whatever it may be. Time bomb. Time bomb. Uh, it, it is, it's, uh, it's uh, it, you know, this is uh, going to take off like a rocket. And then we are forced to share space with all these radical groups. We're denied a permit for our own rally space. We're denied the ability to have our own public address system, which we control, uh, which is an, an outrageous abridgment of the First Amendment. Uh, Unprecedented. So we have played the game by the rules. We have cooperated with the city and with the Cleveland police at every step of the process. Uh, and we have largely been ignored. And there's an attempt to jam these rules down our throats. I'm not optimistic about the court case. Perhaps I'm just a pessimist, but I believe in Cuyahoga County, every judge is it probably a Democratic political hack who has risen to the top of the heap because they couldn't survive in private practice? So um, the law doesn't matter. The principles don't matter. I suspect we'll get an adverse ruling. I'm hopeful that I'm wrong, but I'm a political realist. So yes, I think a mass public demonstration in Cleveland to show the American yes. people what this fight is about is a great idea. Well, sir, you if you want me to haunt show it, fine, but you've got all the groups you know. I'll, I'm ready to promote it. I'm coming, and I'm ready to have a silent demonstration. We can cut across, obviously, the media after, but we're going to – let's see them attack that, and I think we should have it maybe right in front of the city council, wherever you think, and just point out 
this is happening. I'm ready. I'm flying to Cleveland. Uh, and I want everybody that's in the local area to stand with us because, folks, if they can do this, they can do anything, and it means they're planning more shenanigans. They don't want us there when they try to steal the nomination from Trump. I'm telling you, my gut told me this was coming. I said they claim some new scandal and claim a conscience deal. Either I'm psychic or they're listening to the show. No, I'm actually not. I just know how they operate. I knew they were going to do this, Roger. Well, you've been warning about it for some time. Uh, I am, uh, you know, I'd like to have a, a better vote count and a tighter sense of the party committees in which these shenanigans would have to take place. There's no question that Ted Cruz and some of the bitter enders around him, the folks who, uh, you know, who like things the way they are, many of them, in all honesty, would prefer to have Hillary in the White House than Donald Trump because Hillary, Please. like them, is a globalist. Hillary can be dealt with. Trump is an unguided force of nature. Uh, he marches to his own drummer. He's a man. He's, he's a lone American. That's why they hate. Yeah, in the, in the Gary Cooper style, you're absolutely right. Well, this is so epic. Look, I am so excited. This doesn't discourage me to go to Cleveland. Uh, look, here's the deal. If they steal the nomination, it'll cause a revolution. They're that arrogant, though. Obviously, common sense is he's won more votes than any Republican in history. He's the nominee. He's a populist. He's got 25% of blacks going for him. Republicans can't even get 10%. He's got the gays all behind him now. He's reaching out. We're fighting the real Donald Trump that you and I already knew. It's total victory. And But these guys, Paul Ryan and others, are so arrogant. And, and Mitch McConnell and the Koch brothers, they are so arrogant that they still, I'm telling you, they might actually steal it from him and give it to, you know, some lowly Republican. And, and we've just got to be there for this, Roger, because I'm, I'm telling you, they are that arrogant. If they do that, though, what do you really think is going to happen? Because I'm not a violence guy. I've learned that the pen is my ear and the sword, as you have. But at a certain point, if we're living in Ceausescu's Romania and they're ignoring our nominees and, you know, giving it to Hillary when Sanders wins and giving it to whoever when Trump wins, at what point when they've stolen the country and, and claim it's their divine right, a sovereign right to quote, you know, George Will, at what point do I not get on my knees then and just just bow down and ask George Will to pull it out? I mean, you know, I mean, do I either bow to George Will or do I say no to George Will? I'm not getting on my knees and doing you know what? Uh, look, I can't see any instance in which violence is the answer because, as you know, violence will be blamed on Trump and his supporters. No matter who, no matter who threw the first punch, we know that we know what they're up to. This has been the agenda of the Soros move on people and the Clintonites from the beginning, which was to disqualify Trump uh, by branding him as a violent, uh, misogynist, racist, bigot, madman, trigger happy lunatic, uh, a caricature that isn't even close. Who's anti-gay but gives interviews to the, the advocate over and over again and says how yeah, exactly. So, 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 so let's expand on that then. Obviously, I wasn't calling for violence. It was hypothetical. We need to engage in political stunts. Like you just said, we've got to go to Cleveland. We've got to point out they're violating the First Amendment now. So you agree that's a green light plan? Yes, I want to talk to the folks in Cleveland, but uh, the Trump movement is very strong in that part of Ohio and nearby parts of Pennsylvania. I'm convinced we can build a large crowd to make the point uh, that, the, that the First Amendment is being canceled by the city of Cleveland and that that is outrageous, and more importantly, we all, gag balls. we all wear gag balls in our mouth, though. Yeah, absolutely, I think that I think the visual of that is extraordinary. Sure, it is amazing. Okay, I want to do five more minutes. I, I know you have to go, and I appreciate you doing this exclusive interview, Roger Stone, StoneZone.com. But let me briefly just ask you: We're going to go to break in about a minute. I want you to give a message to the mainstream media, since you're not doing interviews today. You're giving us this exclusive. What is your message to them about what this means, where this is going? Because, I listen, you could defeat Trump. You could cheat him. You could steal an election. But that will only make things blow up bigger. Isn't it a Pyrrhic victory, for those that don't know what that is, a victory you win, but then you end up losing because you won it? Isn't cheating Trump and populism Pyrrhic? I think it would be an enormous political mistake because it just underlines that he is not the establishment candidate, that he is the only real reformer. I still don't stay there. Not in support of Ryan Roger, and others. Stay there. Thank you for listening to GCN. Right, stay there. Roger Stone has the floor. We are back. Roger Stone. We've got four and a half minutes left. You have the floor. Your message to the dinosaur media about what Corey Lewandowski's exit means and where the ship of Trump is going in the future. Well, I guess my main major point here would be that exactly at the time that the public uh, uh, ascension is focusing solely on the issue of Islamic extremism. And at a time that Donald Trump's 
proposal for a temporary ban on uh, Muslim immigration is becoming more and more and more popular with the American people, the media is focusing on the minutia of Corey Lewandowski and in internal campaign politics. Now, the average voter doesn't know who Lewandowski is, doesn't know who Roger Stone is, and doesn't care. Um, Trump's agenda is now front and center. This is a golden opportunity, uh, I think, for him to double down. It was interesting to watch that Patriot Jeff Sessions uh, it, it under attack from uh, CNN saying, well, what countries would you ban immigration from? Well, during the Iranian hostage crisis, as you know, Alex, President Jimmy Carter banned all immigration from Iran, as he should have, as he was wise to do. It could be done. Sure, she was acting like she was acting like it's unprecedented. I mean, Saudi Arabia doesn't take anybody from refugee area. Period. I mean, the, the Muslim countries don't take them. So this this mind game that she's all shocked. Oh my gosh, I'm the I'm the wife of the head of the you know Federal Reserve. How dare you say we don't just open our doors to anybody? How about she opens her house up to me? How about I move into her bedroom? Well, you'd certainly raise your refrigerator. Look, the the problem here is a <laughs> is a is a pretty simple one. And that is uh, watching these uh, these Republicans this weekend on CNN saying, well, this is unconstitutional. It may be illegal. On the other hand, I've read the statute. The president absolutely has the authority to ban any group for any reason, for any length of time. To defend the republic. That's what the country's for. Period. There's no constitutional issues here. Now, it may have to be done on a country by country basis. But if you banned immigrants from Syria, from Saudi from half a dozen other countries, I think you could he's address just 14 the countries he's done. Right, exactly. What else is going on on your radar, and Roger Stone? And for those who think that this is going to recede as an issue, they don't understand Trump. This is a winner that the, the, that the two party duopoly and the political establishment despises, but the American people see the carnage in Orlando. We know that this gunman went around and scoped out several other gay clubs. Look, Donald Trump is the only candidate for president who will protect gay people, just like he'll protect all Americans. Special rights for no one, but equal rights for everyone. And what the right do you make of the left flipping out over his record has always been pro-inclusive, pro-free market, executives, you name it. They are, as his real records discovered, they're, they've hit the panic mode as all the many major gay groups are now going, whoa, we were conned. Well, and frankly, after the uh, fact that gay marriage is now settled law, regardless of anyone's personal opinion of that, I think most gay voters are beginning to focus on security uh, and economic opportunity. Unbelievably, the Democratic Party, which has had uh, gays and lesbians as an important part of their constituency, a part of their coalition, certainly an important part of their donor base, has chosen Islamic extremism over the LGBT community. And I think that is outrageous, absolutely outrageous. Only Donald Trump will protect gay Americans as he protects all Americans. Roger, we got 40 seconds left, but I'm going to be honest with you. Barring assassination, my gut tells me, I knew this a year ago, but I know it now. Trump's going to be the next president of the U.S. We just got to decide how we help get him in there. This is an amazing time to be alive. I agree with you. I think anything is now possible. All right, Roger, thanks for the update. Look forward to speaking to you soon. Thanks for the exclusive. StoneZone.com. Roger Stone, thank you for working so hard for America and my family. See you in Cleveland and get your gag ready. I'm ready. You set it up. I'm there. Thank you. Roger Stone. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. We'll be back. Stay with me. This is part of a live Reddit Ask Me Anything event we held last Tuesday night. Uh, we're going to air some more excerpts of it on the other side of this break. And then we've got one of our great news anchors coming in to break down the latest news and developments after that. So please stay with us. I'm Alex Jones, and this is the Info War. Bilbo Dabbins uh, is basically asked a question where he says that he wants to help us out. So we'll have somebody get in touch with you. Um, Disastrous says, thank you for doing this AMA, Alex. Probably one of the most high energy AMAs yet. I don't really have a question, just a comment. I used to be what you called a trendy liberal who used to watch the Young Turks and thought you were insane, that Trump was a racist and the government should take all the guns and we'd probably do better under a one world government. But now I'm a true liberal. I believe in freedom and self-sustainability and the right of man to rule himself. I just want to say that you played a big part in my awakening and I want to thank you for it. I suppose my point here is that people like me can be reached and changed. It just takes some time. 
the harshness of reality, and a little bit of Infowars.com break the conditioning. Oh, thank you. Look, I've been through that same process. I was more liberal in the modern sense when I was younger. Then I realized it was all just an attempt to put me in a cult and dominate me and, and, and make me follow what they said and what they did. A lot of what they said was true, but a lot of it wasn't. But the most important thing was it was all about what language to use and, you know, how I'm guilty and how I'm bad. And, I, and I'm a nice guy, so I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm guilty. I better do all these things. I better do what you say. But then I read deeper into the writings, and they were laughing, calling me a chump and an idiot. So I'm like, you know what? Thomas Jefferson was a liberal. You're not a liberal. Anybody that tries to attack the family or private property or tries to ally with something like radical Islam is not liberal. And, and look, my God, I went after Bush big time. I'm not some mainline conservative either. It's just that under Obama, with that political correctness, they've had such cover to do anything. Imagine with Hillary. If you criticize her for Fast and Furious or Benghazi or IRS Gate or whatever the new crimes are, it's going to be, hey, you just don't like her. She's a woman. I would elect a woman president in one second flat if they were a patriot. Just basic common sense, didn't have it out to get us, didn't want to bankrupt us to control us. The problem is that the political system doesn't let women like that or even men like that get into power. It's a constant vetting process of these, these people that go along to get along. So listen, I'm glad you, quote, woke up. That's only one stage of it. I'm, I'm waking up every day. My views are evolving every day as well. The point is, is that we're not only establishment reservation, we're not thinking about the talking points they give us. We're looking at the world ourselves and developing our own process and our own system. And that's truly diverse. That's truly liberal. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more, Alex. That was a good answer. Um, let's see. Uh, it's funny he said that because <laughs> I wanted to open this up, but I got distracted doing the Facebook mentions and stuff, was just saying, look, I don't claim to have any of the answers, okay? But I've studied what the New World Order, the technocrats have said. They're very arrogant criminals brag. They have a plan for you and your family. Please go look at what they said. It's horribly authoritarian. It's horribly centralized. It's horribly anti-human. And understand that if you're following the modern system of right wing or left wing establishment garbage, you are a chump. You, you are under the control of a system that is totally cold blooded and centralized. And sure, it's easy to take over with centralization. I know why the elites do it. It works. But, but it ends up wrecking humanity. It's a fraud. So I don't have the damn answers, but I'm telling you something. The globalists have it out for you and have written 100 plus textbooks admitting it. So I don't claim to have a certified, you know, corner on reality. All I know is history is replete with examples of people blindly trusting those that claim they have some utopia to offer them if they just give up their free will and just talk like they say and do what they say. And if everybody dresses the same and talks the same. We're all going to enter heaven. We're all going to enter Valhalla. We're all going to enter Nirvana. Every time you enter a God awful hell. So all I'm saying is every metric shows humanity is in a great crisis right now. And it's only getting worse. We need a new renaissance. And all I'm saying is you're part of that renaissance, independently thinking, independently not just spewing whatever the talking points are from the establishment. It's that simple. Yeah, I, I again, I agree with you. <laughs> I feel like a, a parent saying that constantly. But it's interesting, I think, in this context, a lot of what is happening when the, with the Trump phenomenon is, and I keep coming back to this, is they, they, the media keeps lying about what he's saying, and they don't say the full story. They only say that uh, he hates Muslims and he doesn't want them coming into the country. Well, that's not what he said if you take the full He said they've context. stopped vetting any exactly. of them. This is crazy. We can't bring them in from a war-torn area until they fix it. Maybe a week, maybe two weeks, he said. Maybe a month. Stop it all until it's fixed. Right. Exactly. Then they said he hates all... Here's an example. This judge heads up La Raza groups. This judge is involved boycotting him. This judge has people suing him. This guy shouldn't be over his court. Any, I mean, anybody. He should recuse himself. He goes, hey, I'm not mad at him being for his heritage. He's from Mexico. He's a Mexican. He, you know, he's a Mexican national. Because the guy's declared that. Trump said, it doesn't matter, the, the Mexicans in America, that Americans love me. They took it out of context. Exactly. And, 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 and granted, he says it blunt, but I figured this out about the centipede. He is setting them up. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Let's be fair. He baits them. It's like when he comes out and goes, I don't know what's going on about the shooting and everything and how they won't bomb the oil trucks and everything. You know, it's like he's the biggest fool ever. Or maybe there's something else. Maybe he really knows what he's doing. Knowing they'll jump on it and go, oh, you say he did the shooting. You say he's behind ISIS. No, I didn't say that. They've just said it for him. 
This is the skill of the centipede. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm uh, learning stuff from Trump because I've started doing the same thing, baiting the media. It's crazy, man. It is crazy what they'll pick up and, and go after. Because all he's saying is, why won't you bomb the ISIS trucks? And why didn't they turn it into he says that Obama did Orlando? Right. He didn't say that. Exactly. They said it for him. Yeah. So um, this, this question, I think... Uh, needs We're not literally saying he did Orlando. We're right. saying... You open the door up, you allow this jihad to go on, that they keep blocking the FBI going after the people. And, and, and let me be honest, I don't think all Muslims are out to kill people, okay? It's kind of like when Christians went crazy during Inquisitions when they got these crazy fevers and they killed hundreds of thousands of people, you know, whether it was in Spain or France or, you know, it happened everywhere. But at the same time, this is the season of jihad. This stuff's going on. They can't deny it's happening. They can't deny it's unfolding. Anyways, go ahead. Right. The exactly. Next question. I'm sorry. Well, that's not. No, that's a good point. This this question um, needs a little bit of a background. So, uh, uh, when the attacks in Orlando happened, and pardon me, I'm trying to formulate this uh, thought, but when the attacks in Orlando happened on Reddit, there was a big major thread in the the subreddit. It's hard to talk R with these big bright lights in your face, isn't it? It is. It's it's tough. I don't know how you do it, man. It's like we're interrogation for three yeah, hours, exactly. four hours. Go ahead. So. When it happened, there was big uh, threads on, on Reddit. Yeah, the, the largest, one of the largest subs on Reddit, which is called R News, which is supposed to be an, an impartial news. Uh, it was blocking people pointing out it was Islamic. Exactly. It was blocking the people. And that's one reason I'm here on Reddit. You were like, go on Reddit a month ago. There were a lot of fans on there. And I went, you know, they're just going to censor me. He goes, well, why are you on Facebook? And I said, because the war is happening there. And I go, okay, I get your point. Okay, I'm going to go on there just in case. But now they're censoring all these people that are big you know, uh, reporters on radical Islam, including converted Islamists, they're saying, no, no, this is the plan. And that's really scary. We, you know, we should tell the director of Reddit and all the rest of them, really? I mean, do you want your daughter wearing a beast suit? Or do you want her having her genitals cut off? I mean, I'm serious. Well, so then, 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 then at least leave us alone to criticize what's happening and admit this guy's a jihadi. By the way, were the people on Sunday right? Damn right they were, and that's why you censored them. So here's the, the question is by Mr. Picks. He says, what do you think about the censorship on Reddit? Would you say the Reddit admins are cucks? I mean, literally just say the Reddit admins are cucks. Do you think they're cucks? Listen, I don't follow <laughs> Reddit enough. I mean, I've known about it for 10 years or whatever. I don't follow it enough to sit there and say it's evil. All I know is I've heard forever, whenever our stories are trending on Reddit, they get knocked out. I'm only coming on this stream because I'm told it hadn't been censored as much. But I think Reddit basically stifles itself. And so does Google, and so does, you know, Apple. I mean, Google's been caught in the last week. I don't want to just pick on Reddit, because it's not fair. You know, we're here on this platform, it's somewhat free. But I'm saying the freedom of Reddit is the freedom of the owners of Reddit, too. I mean, cut your nose off and spite your face. I mean, what the hell is your problem if you're doing this? Google's been caught in hundreds of results on Hillary scandals, changing it where you cannot search the corruption she's involved in. And it's like this woman is a monster. But Google lives at the White House. It was founded with CIA money. And I just don't think Reddit, Dig used to, remember Dig? Yep. They used to censor us all the time. They're, they're, they're dead as a doornail. Yep. So, so just the, as soon as you start killing the freedom of these communities, you've started killing yourself. Absolutely. Um, so I think it's horrible. And I, and I did see examples of that. We've been censored on Reddit. We've been censored on Facebook. We've been censored on um, things like Twitter, Real Alex Jones. And, and, and also, we've had things uh, happen where we tried to get a Google store like six, seven years ago. There's, we got screenshots of it in articles. And we were selling the Obama deception. They went, that's racist. We talked to their admins. We went, it's a film about he's deceived people. He's a globalist. And I made book, films about Bush. This film's actually about Bush, too. We don't say he's bad because he's, he's from Africa or whatever, or part African. And they just said, we don't care. You're not selling a movie putting down Obama. Man, that's cult-like. What the hell? I would never think about arresting Michael Moore because I disagree with some of his movies, you know, like his, like his uh, anti-gun movie. I actually agree with a lot of his 9-11 movie. But it's regardless. I mean, what world do are we in where, oh, let's just arrest Dinesh D'Souza, you know, because he made a film about Obama. Well, what, what's this old adage that I think is attributed to Teddy Roosevelt? And I, I don't know if that's actually true or not. But... The old adage is, uh, uh, if you want to anger a Republican, lie to him. If you want to anger a liberal, tell him the truth. Well, all I know is so-called modern liberals, that's a great point. <clears throat> so-called modern liberals are just fake pseudo-intellectuals. And then all the real liberals I know that have been smart people ever since I was, you know, knew them, they're completely just freaked out and just like, whoa, I don't know what to do. I mean, they hate the Republicans. They're like, so they see the Democrats. It's like the head of the Green Party just came out and said, 
Hillary's much worse than Donald Trump. Well, of course she is. I mean, she is a freaking monster, man. She's like Henry Kissinger with a vagina. You know, I mean, I hate both these people. It's like, you know, they're, oh, she's a woman. You don't like her. I could, I love women. I, I hate this thing where you just don't like Hispanics because you don't want to open border. You don't like women. It's like, my only problem is spoiling the daylights out of women, okay? Let's just get that part straight. I love women. I absolutely love women. I like women's company much more than men's. I just, I don't like Hillary because she's a freaking war criminal, folks. Um, I am a centipede asks, what can young people in their early 20s do to win the info war? You know, I think people in their early 20s, unless they're getting an engineering degree or something like that. I mean, maybe 10% of the degrees, I talked about this 20 years ago, but now it's admitted, only 10% of the degrees might end up making you money. Might end up giving you a career where you actually can pay off the debts and, and, and be sustainable. That's been done by design. That they're, they're creating a post-human world where robots and technocracies are in control and the elites are in control of that. This is all being done, admittedly, by design. They've built a world where, where, where humans aren't needed. So they can slowly make us fight over resources and artificial scarcity and phase us out. And the elites can merge with machines and be gods. I'm not the one saying that. That's Google. That's Ray Kurzweil. That's all of them. I've been saying it the longest, you know, reporting on them. But, but, but now, everything I put in my film Endgame nine years ago is pretty much mainstream news. Uh, so plant a garden. And, and when I say all this, I'm not a perfect example. I, I'm giving you know, advice I wish I'd follow. Eat healthy. Uh, be loving. Don't, don't, don't be Madison Avenue, narcissistic, thinking you're not empowered. Know that you're part of the universe and that you truly are alive. That's a magical thing. Uh, reach out to others. Have a purpose-driven life where you're dedicated to defending innocence and defending human liberty. Uh, and uh, get involved as an apprentice. Uh, you know, become a carpenter. Become a, a, a person that paints cars. Uh, become a restorer. Uh, just start creating art, create culture that is outside of the control of the paradigm of the left or the right and this whole fake system and just stare up at the stars at night and almost like a magic spell that'll open the doors of perception in your own heart and psyche to transcend this false matrix they're building uh, and then we can fly and be free. Uh, I, mean, I think that's the answer is just be free. Gregorian Chance has a pretty long question here. Uh, he says, what an honor to talk to you. He says he's a writer, and he basically says, he's basically asking, what advice would you give to a young author trying to publish his, his stories that are, uh, you know, liberty-minded stories? I would suggest that you roll around on the ground, see them with power. No, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> uh, no, no, seriously. <clears throat> a young author trying to publish your stories. Here, here's the best advice I can give anybody. So many people trade their passion for glory to quote the cheesy Eye of the Tiger song. Maybe we can play that as a segue later. But I love how it's even hotter in here at night. Wow, I'm sweating. I like it. Um, I started out 21 years ago on Access Television. I didn't make money in radio and TV for like three years. I didn't care about money. I care. And it's not that money's bad because it's a symbol of energy. It's, it's good to show you're successful and be able to do more. It opens a lot of doors. Just money can't be your god. Money is just a tool to an end, a means to an end. But I wrote articles, I did videos, I tried to find any medium I could to put the truth out about what I believe was happening from my perspective, not that I mean it's some ultimate truth, but, but my truth. And it was successful because I had real passion. So many people get involved a few months or a few years and they want to be the leader and they see other people involved in whatever movement it is and oh they're not perfect they, they spend their time trying to manage the other people they spend their time again trying to say what words to use conservatives and libertarians and the awakening movement has its own political correctness because the truth is political correctness isn't just on the left yeah we've always had orthodoxy we've always had inquisitions we've always had pharisees we've always had the elders that wanted to Tell us how the cow ate the cabbage and run the show. Now, a real elder just tries to inform others to go have their own journey and be free. But these fake elders try to control the whole paradigm. And so I would ignore infighting. I would ignore orthodoxy. I would ignore what other people are telling you to say or do. And I would go with your gut, your heart, your intuition, history, common sense, your own experiences. And I would just pick a gnome de plume or two, a pen name. Uh, uh, and and put out, you know, not stuff that's criminal, but really radical, pure thought of what you think. Post it and put at the end of it, this is free to put anywhere you want. 
and, and don't make it territorial. And, and, and just almost watch when you give up your individual self, which I'm all about keeping your individual self, but as a practice, almost sending out Imperial probe droids, because I've done this myself with known plumes and videos and things over the years, a little secret uh, I'll, I'll reveal here today, that it almost has more power metaphysically when you disconnect your real name from it. But then separately also put stuff out in your real name and then quote this other person that's really you. So the, <laughs> these are some fun things to do. And, and, and also don't just do writing. Go out and do videos. Go out and just shoot things, whether it's ants crawling around the ground or whether it's, you know, uh, you know, the stars at night or whether it's a political event, just engage and, and, and do it and everything else will fall into place. Marvel Gladness has a complicated question. Uh, he says, Al hello, Alex. We know that you talk to multiple sources and that your line of journalism puts you in the know on some pretty incredible subjects. Um, he says, I value your opinion, so please, without being overly vague or waving the question off with a look, all I know is answer. I want to ask. What do you really know, and what can you tell us about alien or multidimensional life as well as advanced technology that exists now and is hidden from the public? Wow. All right, now we're getting to good questions. Um, let's just go through a bunch of them fast. When I say I have a lot of amazing sources, we have amazing sources because over the years, they know we're not working for any agency or group. Though, <laughs> point is... There is an agency in all groups that wants to survive and be good. And it resonates. It's spiritual. It's unwritten. It's sixth sense. So we are in the agency of people that don't want to destroy the earth. I'm in that agency. It's unwritten. There's no letters. There's no code words. It's beyond that. It's spiritual. Uh, so I do work for an agency, but, but not one that's temporal. And, and, and I don't mean that on a power trip. So do you. That's why they want you to choose a group. Because then it all resonates within that paradigm. But we have amazing sources because we don't give the sources up. I mean, I remember Raymond T. He died like three weeks after I met with him. He'd been coming down the show for like 18, 19 years. Good friends with my dad. Got to know him, you know, after he, I got to know Raymond. He actually worked at InfoWars for a few years. He was a top NASA scientist. And he kept telling me, I'm going to tell you everything. I'm going to tell you everything. We went to the moon, but it's not like you thought. We have advanced technology. And then he called me one time over to a hotel where he was picking up some family flew in. And he, we had a hamburger about two weeks before he died. And I got there and he said, I'm sorry, I just can't tell you. And he was dead. But uh, he did tell me, yes, we went to the moon, but we have other advanced technology. And we were just a front broadcast to kind of cover for what was really going on because we didn't want everybody to know what we had. And this guy has, I remember his house, national security letters from the president. He was in Cambodia. And two weeks after we talked to him, his whole heart just blew up and he died. So people ask me questions like that. Let me tell you what the elite believe. At Bilderberg, at Skull and Bones, at Bohemian Grove, they get together and basically chant and worship to transcendentally open up gates to other dimensions to get knowledge they believe is from extraterrestrials they call angels. And they pray to these angels, and they believe they're being given advanced knowledge. And that's how 170 years ago they were coming up with mathematical equations for atomic bombs. And if you look at the Huxleys and the Wedgwoods and the Darwins and all of them who were interbred, they were saying, we'll have biometrics, double DNA helix. They wrote this like the 1850s, 160 years ago, 165 years ago. And they were in, having visions. I mean, this is in their own books. The liberals are like, we're scientists, and Darwin said he scientifically, no, Darwin said he had week long hallucinations and channeled everything. And then they built what they channeled. So I don't know what's going on. It's kind of like Buckaroo Banzai when the scientist goes to the dimension and goes back all crazy and knows all this <laughs> stuff. That's kind of what it is, folks. Yeah. I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, listen, what do you call it when people like in the 1850s have visions and now our whole world's built off of it and everything they envisioned worked just like they thought? Buckley, what's that sound like to you? I, I, I don't know. Um, but they don't get a long, convoluted answer. Have I seen a little green man? Absolutely not. Was I driving back from our ranch in East Texas when I was six years old? My dad said, look at that. And there were stealth fighters. These stealth fighters, but painted up green, flying like three of them right over the cornfields. And I mean, it was like, my dad's like, look at that. It's like, they're just cruising like 500 miles an hour. Just, you know, and then 20 years later, they declined. I mean, you know, God knows what's going on, man. They've got viruses they can inject in you in a vaccine that reprogram your whole brain now.
They admit that. I was told that 20 years ago by sweaty NSA guys who were like, here's the documents. The Scientific Atlantic has a cable box, and it's watching and listening on the AI computer. And it was like all it later came out as real. I mean, you know, and they've got they've got all these systems and they've got over the horizon future predicting systems. Google's an AI. Google's an AI. And you watch the guy in the parking garage drive off in a hundred fifty thousand dollar Mercedes. You know, it, it, it's and you're like going, hey, I'm on TV. Look, here's the cable box. You break it open on TV and it's got a microphone and camera in it. You go out the parking lot, there's guys from the army that beat you up. I mean, this has been my life. Uh, of course, I beat them up too. But uh, the point is, is that I don't know, okay? I don't know. All I know is what you're being told isn't the reality. And it goes way beyond Rachel Maddow and, and, and you know, all those people on Fox News. That's a pretty uh, huge subject. <laughs> um, Mo Reese says, Alex, I'm a longtime fan. Thanks for dedicating your life to sharing information to preserve liberty. Every journalist reporter that I've ever talked to has encouraged me to pick one specific topic to blog about. What topic can I talk about and report on that is important but hasn't had much light shined on it that would be a valuable asset to the resistance? And the second part of the question is, will we ever see a return of the days where a family can be raised on a single income? That's an interesting question. Everything was designed to take us off a single income, to end the family as we know it, make us totally unresistant so we can be assimilated into the globalist hive. And the answer the end part first, into the outdoor. What was the first part? The first question was... Um, what what is a, a a specific subject to blog about that would uh... I I disagree with that. You know I think you tend to get more attention if you have a blog about one subject on the surface. But more importantly, don't just blog. Go out, take photos. Go out, interview people. Doesn't matter how high tech it is. Have it be multimedia number one. And it's not that hard. You know, write your article, but also take a few photos, or take somebody else's photos, or collaborate with somebody. But I, you know, a, 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 a whole field that I wish I focused more on, I wish other people would focus more on, is chimeras. I mean, 20 years ago, I would read about gestating humanoids in uterum on military facilities across the world. Growing humanoids inside cows, growing humanoids inside pigs, growing humanoids inside sheep, uh, things like that. And it was admitted with government contracts was being done, but there weren't photos, there wasn't video. I mean, quite frankly, if I knew one of these facilities was nearby, but they, they keep them hidden, that's the kind of thing where there's a Pulitzer Prize, you get in, you show that. Okay. And now, though, they, they're getting ready to roll it out publicly, so this window will be closed soon to get real attention. Because once they roll it out and make it no big deal, then it's just accepted. Well, of course they're growing humans. Of course. But imagine we have all these little symbols on shampoos and colognes and shaving creams that say, you know, this was test free. No animals were tested on the creating of this. Well, what about where you splice animals and humans together and then do medical tests on the embryos or even the born young of those, which they're doing. And then there's no debate about it because it's all kept behind closed doors. So I would say genetic mutations, chimeras, uh, what's going on on these farms. MIT headline six months ago, you know, on hundreds of farms, humanoids are gestating inside animals. That's what I've been telling you forever, but there it was. And then suddenly all these articles are like, yeah, we got mutants growing, but it's no big deal. Huh? Just make sure we have the tranny bathrooms in. Oh, you're afraid of trannies. And I'm like, no, I don't care about trannies. What I care about is the chimeras. And they go, shut up, homophobe. And I go, but what about the chimeras? Do they have any rights? And they go, oh, we have a sticker on our shampoo that says no bunny rabbits got tested on. We're good people. You're not. And you just kind of go, but as a human, do you care about this? And they just go, last time I heard H.G. Wells died a long time ago. There's no island in Dr. Maru. <coughs> so that's a subject. They have vaccines coming out that reprogram your brain <coughs> with viruses. They have all this garbage. I mean, there's so many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different topics that are out there. I, that's a good question. Millennial for Trump says, uh, hi, Alex, two questions. If possible, I've been a big fan lately, but it's been harder to get my Fox News loving parents on board. My mother wants to know if you or your team have any plans to do any mainstream media news appearances in the near future. And his second question is, are your epic rants pre-planned? If not, 
Can you give us a, we are breaking the conditioning for old time's sake, as if you were talking to Carl the Cut? No, unfortunately, the rants are not planned. <laughs> but there was almost some today that were not planned that would have been too, too uh, out of control to actually have. Um, no, the uh, rants are uh, a physiological expression of stress that I do not wish to engage in and that I work as hard as I can not to engage in. Um, let's say this. People ask me all the time, is your show fake when you blow up? And most of the time, I'm already pissed. I let the dog go. I let it off the leash. So it's not fake, but I let myself do it. So let's say 5% is fake, you know, because, but, but sometimes it's not fake. Sometimes there's no control. And that way goes madness. If you really want to get out of brass, Buckley, am I fake on there? No, hey, you're, you're too real, actually. Uh, that may be part of the problem. I don't know. Alex is just as visceral and real as, uh, you know, as any of you got anybody out there. That's why, that's why he's such a singular figure here in, uh, uh, in, in media is that nobody else does what he does. Everybody else is, is reading off of a teleprompter like right it's now. It's too damn insecure. Exactly. They're spacewalking into eternity. Why not just go with it? But they're also being controlled. There's, you know, Roger oh, they, Ailes is sitting there looking at everything that's written on Fox News and, and, and saying yes, no, yes, no, no, yes, you can do He does. This. God, what a horrible job. And, and, uh, How the hell does he do that at 80 years old? Jesus Christ. Exactly. So nobody, there are very few people in the news, should I say, they get to ask the questions that are outside of the paradigm. And so, you know, it's been proven that the, the Department of Defense and uh, other other uh, arms of the government, they put out press releases and then they just distribute this stuff, you know. And it, they, it, they say it word for word. You've seen the you've seen the Conan uh, Conan O'Brien or I don't know some. Which shows all the newscasts exactly. Line. Daily Show does it too. Exactly. Well, here's the deal. And the weird thing is verbatim. Ninety five percent of the Pentagon disagrees with the propaganda put out by the Pentagon. That's true. People say, well, you say the Pentagon's corrupt, but you say they're great people. That's the paradox. The people in there are the most awake because they, they live in the bull factory. Exactly. But, the, but then the elites are on top using its name to put it out, knowing it's respected. And they're just sitting there going, ah, you know. And I finally figured that out about 10 years ago. Because I used to, you know, I didn't figure that out until about 10 years ago. And the minute I figured that out, oh, you know, people really started clicking then. Yeah. And, I mean, we talked to tons of people like William Benny from the NSA and Lots of people that came from that world that, that give us the insight that the vast majority of people are not down with the programs that are well, being instituted. The globalists are all about giving disinfo and controlling access. No one is given more disinfo than Barack Obama. I guarantee you, if Barack Obama was given the information I'm given every day from all these different groups, I mean, it's sick. If he was given all that intel, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing. That guy, his whole life has been kept in like an incubation chamber. Fed horse. Yeah, well, how could you? That's why I'm not even against crazy. Obama. At the, like, <clears throat> you got to feel sorry for anybody that doesn't tune into reality and how big this paradigm is and the universe. I'm like spacewalking into eternity. It's like the universe is like the Earth's like this big back here. I just want to try to get humanity to be free because that's where my ancestors are from and my progeny. But I've already transcended all this. I'm just like, what the hell is going on here? You know, I mean, it's just ridiculous, Buckley. And I'm not even saying... I'm that great of a person. Any primitive person had transcended. They would go to like primitive people all over the world and go, I'll give you all this money for your land. And they'd go, but the fish are in the land. I'm happy. I don't want it. It's little starving villagers in Africa are more happy than trendy kids here in Austin, Texas. It's just this modern system has empowered us in many ways, but we're losing our souls in the process. And all I want to do is have you be empowered. And, and people go, oh, that's really cheesy. He wants me to get ahead. See, in that is the essence of failure. I really want you to succeed. I, I really do. So because, yeah. because interdimensionally, just in a spiritual sense, this is out of some book, I know it. When you start falling, I start falling with you. When I watch you falling like a star, burning up, your soul dissipating, what you could have been, failing, the seed not sprouting. When there's unlimited potential in the universe, I groan under it, okay? And I'm not somebody special. That's a normal spiritual need is to see others lifted up. You don't get ahead being a cock. You don't get ahead being an arrogant bastard. You don't get ahead keeping others in the dark and screwing them over. And please don't take my confidence and aggression as arrogance. I'm not arrogant. I'm nobody. And the fact that I'm not even that strong, but I stand out amongst other people shows how sick we are. The truth is, 
I'm just primitive enough to not care. And I'm telling you, the beginning of freedom is not caring what trendies and the establishment think, whether it's Republican PTL board, your fake church, or some liberal LGBT group you're in. If they want to make you conform and dominate you, it's because they're empty souls that want to rule. Souls that have already been dominant and powerful want to see others be strong, not dominate others. And what we don't need is a bunch of miscreant fallen people trying to lead us into the next level. This is not going to happen. They're going to lead us into hell. So what you're saying is that you want to make America great again? I want to make humanity free again, and I want to see my grandchildren live a thousand years. It's very doable. You look at the science we have now, it's like magic to folks 100 years ago. It's like God to people 1,000 years ago. It's like beyond God to people 5,000 years ago. 10,000 years ago, they couldn't even comprehend it. We are on the cusp, and I don't want it for myself. What's... I, I love my ancestors. I love my progeny. I want to see us together in the future doing some amazing stuff. Where when people have become whatever these amazing you know creatures we already are and are going to be, look back and say, "Here's to the founders." Yep, you want to be the the giant that everyone's standing on their shoulder. That's true. Absolutely. And that's, you know, I think about it, think about how this country was built and all the people that, that worked so hard and all the ideals. If we're, exactly. If we're not just envious and petty pieces of shit, we're going to go all the way. The whole way. It, it, the species is going to do the whole way. Things we can't even imagine, Buckley. But we just can't be greedy bastards and look down on weaker people than us and keep them in the dark so we can rule over them. They're not meant to be ruled over. They're meant to be empowered and lifted up. Absolutely. And we lift ourselves up when we do that. Yep. It's the ultimate destiny. I agree with you. And I think that's one of the things that people are responding to with Trump is that he's sort of exemplifying that ideal. If you go back and you read his books and you look at all the people that have worked with him, you know, for instance, the woman that was the uh, manager or architect of his, uh, uh, of his buildings back in the 70s. He's not perfect, but he's an animal. He's a man that wants prosperity. He isn't out to get people. The he wants prosperity, he's aggressive, he's got his own issues, but he's not someone that wants to sabotage humanity. That's why they hate him. That's why they want to destroy him. He'd never been part of their club. He's not out to get anybody. That's why they hate him. Yep. Absolutely. He's a fan of humanity. That's what they hate, Buckley. Yep, absolutely. Um, Reynolds from Colorado says, longtime listener, I started to wake up from your show in Ron Paul's campaign. Awesome stuff. Um, what do you have to say to all the good Americans who believe that you're controlled opposition? Okay, I'm controlled opposition. Now the excuse is done for you. You're better than me. Go on and save us. <laughs> uh, it's total horse manure. Uh, I'm my total independent own self, and I just promote private property, family, pro-human activities, uh, life extension, uh, free market. I just want us to be successful, and I stand against any groups that try to centralize control. And, uh, I mean, those questions have to come, but they're just so... Cuckled. They're just they're just so in their own world, you know. Honey, what do you say about controlled opposition? You know, what does that even mean? Leanne McAdoo in a beautiful green outfit. Let's get her over on here. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a, a special guest that is joining us, Leanne McAdoo. She is one of our intrepid reporters. She is uh, super insightful and uh, is a wonderful person. And looks very nice wearing that green outfit. And I like the little, I like the little bracelet. Thank you. I just got done uh, recording the B block so I could come sit in here with you. That's right. To be clear, in T minus 10 minutes, <laughs> the nightly news starts at Infowars.com and at, at PrisonPlanet.tv. But go ahead, we're live. I will be in two places at the same time. Ooh, co <laughs> co you guys already talked about all the good stuff, the alien. I, I don't know. This, the, here, go ahead. Here's a really good question. <laughs> uh, MAGA Navigator says, Alex, I love your work. Thank you for taking time from your day to join us. Now, as to my question, what is your opinion on the Trump Kissinger meeting? The meeting with Kissinger disturbed me. Kissinger is a major league New World Order puppeteer, and he should be in prison for war crimes and genocide. I totally agree. And we shouted him down. Our reporters did, Rob Dew and others, Josh Owens and Paul Watson, uh, there just a few days ago in Dresden, Germany. And a few weeks ago, when we had that Kissinger meeting. We, we talked about it, and, and it came out that he disagreed with Kissinger in the meeting, disagreed with James Baker in the meeting, but he did meet with him. And that's why they've come after him even more. Remember, Newt Gingrich was endorsing him. They offered him $200 million, Sheldon Adelson, the, the casino owner, and Trump wouldn't take the money. So now notice he, Gingrich is against him. I don't expect purity. because Nobody's pure. I, I'm, I'm not perfect. It's too hard to even figure out what I'm doing the next minute. But if Trump starts going along with these guys, then I'll have a problem. 
if he if he if, if he picks Newt Gingrich as running mate, I'll be concerned. But so far, we haven't seen that. And so I don't have a problem with him. He said he'd meet with Kim Jong-un. He said he'd meet with the Iranian leaders. And then he's like, oh, how dare you meet with them? No, he says he'll meet with anybody in power to try to make us free and great again. So that's where I stand on that. I care about what Trump does, not who he meets with. What do you think, Buckley? I think that's a great point. I mean, it's it's ironic that in the uh, aftermath of this Orlando shooting that, that – uh, that Hillary is out banging the drums and saying he doesn't have the temperament to be presidential. And that's a perfect example of it, is meeting with somebody that he disagrees with vehemently, uh, but yet, yet still being able to like sit down with them and, yeah. and, and be in the same room and, and, and see what they're, you know, what they're- I want your comment, Liam, I always had this. I was shocked when he agreed to meet with Richard Haas of the CFR. Mm -hmm. But then a week later, Haas came out and badmouthed him everywhere and said the meeting was horrible and Trump's an idiot. So Trump meets with him and tries to convince him, why are you effing you know, America over? And then they come out against him. So, well, for, but, me, for me, it goes back to uh, early in the race when there was still like 17 people in the race. And I was on the fence for a lot of things, but Trump, it seemed, was just collecting these enemies. And they were all the right enemies, you know? Every single time one of them would pop up and attack him, I'd go, God, I'd love for that guy to attack me. The Bushes. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Uh, you know, it's polarizing. He's just, he's just uh, you know, focusing on what his office He's like, why should I fight with Putin? Putin says you're a genius. What I go, how dare you call me a genius? <laughs> well, of course, he's going to have meetings with these globalists because now they see that the people are behind him. They can't stop him. So I was actually at first, I was like, why is he meeting with them? But then it's kind of like, I feel like really like they're slithering in going, you're going to need to join us or we're going to. I hear your daughter's pregnant. You know what I mean? Like, like he loves exactly. his well, family. It is a respect thing, though. He's meeting with the mafia dons and, and, and being respectful. Oh, they'd kill him. He knows right. all the he knows how all the mojo works. I mean, it's it's it's. And he loves stuff. his family. That's why you see a lot of like Secret Service guys, uh, his people, uh, special forces. They don't tend to have families, children, and stuff because that makes them a target. They'll come after their family because they know they love them so much, and so it makes them weak. And that's that was for me. It kind of frightened me, but. All right, the Alex Jones Show is not over. You are tuned into the fourth hour. I'm your host, Rob Dew. Uh, we've got a pretty big show today. I got a lot of videos uh, for you guys. Plus, I'm going to have an interview with the young man who is the centerpiece of a video that Jakari Jackson shot at the Atlanta Trump rally. His name is Quaterius Manuel. And uh, this video has over a million views now. He's basically taking a guy twice his age and uh, basically showing how much of an idiot he is just by letting the guy speak. That's what I do at a lot of these rallies. I just let these people speak because... You will know them by their faults, by the words that come out of their mouths. But before we get to that, we have a Jeff Sessions video that uh, Alex did not get to. This is on CNN earlier. Um, basically claiming, you know, he's saying foreigners do not have a right to come here. There's no constitutional right guaranteeing anyone has a right to come to this country. And he's absolutely right. So let's get to that video as we kick off the fourth hour of Overdrive. What, what does that mean? Do, are you going to um, look specifically at certain countries are you going to look at certain religions? How would that actually work in practical terms? Then I think you first you look at background. Look at the countries where uh, we have an, uh, of this 580 terrorists, uh, about 95% or so are from Islamic countries. So, for example, give me some names of countries that you would look at first. Well, I, all I can tell you is the public data that we have indicate that there are quite a number of countries in that region that have s sent uh, a large number of people that have become terrorists. And so... so are you talking about Saudi Arabia? Or well, are you talking about... It all depends. A lot of it's on population. Iran. Like Pakistan has a number of uh, people from Egypt, uh, Syria, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan. Um, so you would Yemen. consider, and Mr. Trump would consider, banning immigration temporarily completely from those countries? Not completely. I mean, you, you got diplomats and business people have been traveling for a long time, but tightening up that, pausing on the normal flow here until we get a, a good data base that the administration has refused to give us and protect the American people. That's not unreasonable. You don't have a constitutional right to come to America. We respect your religion in this country. We will defend your right to free exercise of religion. But a person with an ideology that goes beyond normal religion, that believes you can kill gays, that kills people who 
change their view about the religion they have. Uh, that is a dangerous thing, and we do not have to admit people like that. And you have these clueless liberals who are at these Trump rallies <clears throat> protesting Trump, saying he wants to ban all Muslims. When Jimmy Carter did the same thing during the Iran hostage crisis, he, he banned immigration uh, for Iranians into this country. There's nothing wrong with that, especially when you're in. Ab absolutely, we seem to be in a war now with ISIS and those who are Islamic terrorists, Islamic radicals. Uh, they don't care about our values, and uh, they want us to adopt their values. And Jeff Sessions is right when he says, we respect your religion when you get to this country, but you have no constitutional right to come to this country. There's nothing that says we have to let everybody in. Not, nothing whatsoever. But what happens when you let people in? Well, when we get back from the break, we're going to play a video from this article. It's from Paul Joseph Watson. Report, three Syrian refugees rape little girl at knife point in Idaho. And Alex was really hitting on this this morning when he was on the air uh, live from the Caribbean. But these three youths, 8, 10, and 13, the oldest boy directing the site, they grab this little girl by knife point. They force her into a room. And and uh, and basically raped this little girl, and they found her, and they called the police, and it took two hours for the police to arrive, and they didn't take any action because of a language barrier. And we've seen this happen in traffic accidents here in in Austin. Uh, David Knight got rear-ended by a guy driving a dump truck, just about, and uh, they didn't they didn't give him a ticket because they couldn't he couldn't speak English. So you don't speak English, you don't you come to this country, and you're given everything in the world. Anyway, hey, we'll be back with more. We're going to be back with that video and also about an Uber driver who basically took out a gunman in Chicago, a place with very restrictive gun laws. We'll be back. This is Rob Dewitt's Fourth Hour. So we were talking about the three Syrian refugees who raped a little girl at Knife Point in Idaho. And what's interesting about this? Well, one, they videotaped the entire assault on a cell phone. And But the case has been officially sealed by a judge with no evidence of it being unsealed because all parties are minors. And a video of the Twin Falls City Council meeting shows irate residents demanding to know why council members have done nothing to address the alleged rape, as well as numerous other issues involving Syrian refugees being housed in the area, including hit and run accidents, incidents, Muslims spitting on non-Muslims. And there's a, a reportedly around 50 refugees housed at the Fawn Brook site. And they were also grilled on how a mosque was approved just after 24 hours, whereas a new home application would take at least two weeks to process. In every instance, the council members claim ignorance as to the severity of the situation. And, and then, of course, because people brought these up, they were uh, called, they had, they had anti-Muslim prejudice. That's what their concerns were based upon. So here's an, a, a video of Terrence Edwards confronting the city council that he believes is engaging in a cover-up of a rape of the five-year-old girl we've just been talking about. So here's that video. Uh, I guess my concern is, is as I've uh, conveyed to Mr. Hall here in the past, with the refugee uh, situation we have in this community and uh, the Muslim impact, and I guess everybody's aware of what happened in Orlando and what's happened in San Bernardino and what's happened in parts other than here, small communities even. Uh, we've been made aware of a uh, situation, an alleged assault of a minor child, and uh, we can't get any information on it. Apparently, it's been indicated that it was uh, the perpetrators were four Muslim youth that uh, conducted this, uh, I guess it was rape, and we've heard that it's consensual, but my concern is there's no such thing as consensual rape of a minor. The police department, as I talked to Mr. Hall about it, that he he's adamant that everybody on the police department is, is good people and he's looked them in the eye and those folks are good people and they're peaceful and the Muslims are peaceful. That's what they said, San Bernardino, that's what they've said in other places that we've seen this uh, carried out. And I know that you can't stop everybody and be concerned about it, but when there is a violation of somebody's rights and there's a, uh, an attack on their personal being, we should be able to be made aware of that. And uh, I think that there's a, a uh, method of cover-up here in the community. I think it starts with the police department. 
I think that they are, have their mouth zip closed. The media is not getting in on it. We hear get more information from the KMVT than we do from the community at large and the police department. So I'm just, I'm just alerting you to the facts that if you don't get your head wired to your posterior, you folks are going to be with a mic in front of your face trying to answer questions about Islam, the Quran, the Hadith, the Sunnah, and you're going to act like a bunch of morons because you don't have a clue as what's going on in this community. Wow, man, it's very calm and collected. Um, I can't believe that more hasn't happened uh, thus far in Twin Falls. And so how do, how do these refugees get to Twin Falls? Do you think they land uh, at some airport like JFK or LaGuardia and go, let's go to Twin Falls, Idaho? Never been there. Let's go check it out. Now, now this is how we got a video coming up from Barbara Day, and she's going to talk about how the refugee resettlement program works because it's very calculated. They want to send refugees, kind of like what they're doing in Germany. They're taking a village of maybe 100 people and sending 1,000 refugees there. Um, or they're taking, uh, you know, five thousand. There was one town we went to, there was 38,000 people there, and they have... Uh, about 1,200 refugees that they have spread around. We actually interviewed one, a young man named Muhammad, and you can find that in the Alex Jones channel. But here's Barbara Day explaining how the uh, the domestic resettlement section chief works and what their process is to moving refugees around the country. The philosophy of the United States Refugee Resettlement Program is uh, is built on the premise that refugees will become self-sufficient as soon as possible, ideally through employment, although some refugees, of course, come to join family members who are already economically self-sufficient. Um, we view self-sufficiency uh, and participation in local affairs as signs of integration into our culture. The United States accepts uh, most of its refugees through referrals from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. And um, within that criteria of uh, international law, um, we accept the most vulnerable refugees. Um, we have systems in place throughout our country whereby those refugees most in need of our assistance can be welcomed provided with the assistance that they need, and find uh, security, safety, and a future in the United States. Certainly most refugees dream of returning to their home country, but for many refugees that is not possible. And for those refugees that can no longer be protected in the region offering initial protection, uh, resettlement to a third country becomes sometimes not not only the the best option but the only option and um, the United States certainly encourages other countries to uh, continue to resettle refugees to increase the numbers of refugees that they are able to to resettle in a given year and of course we welcome new resettlement countries to our community of, uh, of this wonderful form of humanitarian assistance and protection it's a wonderful form if they really want to come here and be assimilated. And from talking to the, the young man in uh, Germany, you know, he says he wants to be resettled, but he has no interest in going back to his country. And this is a young man of prime working age. He should be working on his country. It's like uh, we talk to these uh, people who run around shaking the Mexican flags. If Mexico is so great, and you want to shake the Mexican flag. Why are you here? Why aren't you in Mexico making Mexico great again? Why are you coming to our country and telling us we have to become Mexico? <clears throat> because there's a reason you or your parents left Mexico. I want to go to this final video here in this kind of refugee uh, subject we're talking about. And this is a guy that Michael Zimmerman interviewed, and he's a Brit. And he's got a dire warning for America. He was at a Trump rally uh, over the weekend. And this is his, I guess, warning to America about where we're going, the path we're going down. And, and uh, I guess Britain's already been down that path, so he doesn't want to see us go in that same direction. Here's that video. Michael Zimmerman for Infowars.com. I'm here outside the Donald Trump rally in Phoenix, Arizona, talking to Lewis, who was born in the UK and then uh, moved to Australia and then ultimately to America because you love constitutional culture, you said. Yeah. 
And um, to be honest with you, you know, I, I was listening to a lot of old-fashioned Baptist preaching, and um, just from gaining appreciation for God and His Word, you know, I gained an appreciation, I suppose, yeah, like I the Founding no Fathers did for the Constitution, one. which has founded itself upon the Word of God. And then um, the thing that broke my heart kind of coming here is seeing how I can see remnants of, like, v vestigial remnants of that constitutional culture and how basically the Constitution is really in its last phases of the great attack that's going on to try and destroy and bring down, like, America for what it is. Like, when I got here, I, I thought it was like the shining city on the hill because it, it's like the most Christian nation in the face of the planet. But when I got here, I, 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 I learned firsthand that um, the, the broad way of people here, and this is what really kind of struck my heart, is there's people in, in England and there's people in, in Australia, they're almost inseparable from most people here that don't know the Constitution. They're just these brainwashed liberal fools that don't understand on a, on a hard basis and on a gut basis how important it is to have a Second Amendment culture. You know, people think it's just about, uh, you know, um, men, you know, wanting to appear manly. It's not at all. You know, it's it's something much more deeper than that. It is. It's a fight for your life. It's a fight for your freedom. Exactly. It really is, you know, and uh, not even not even just freedom, but liberty, not the freedom to do whatever you want, but the liberty, the, the, the ability to do what is right, to know what is right, to sense what is right. And now what we see is a complete degradation of the morals which the founding fathers followed to the point where people People don't know what is right. They don't know the right hand from the left hand. So they, to them, the founding fathers are nothing but just a bunch of dudes, a bunch of dead guys. To them, the Constitution is nothing but a piece of paper. But the thing is, is you know, I heard of a, a, a guy who used to talk called Bill Cooper on the radio, and the very first show he ever did, he was shot dead, by the way, for, for saying the same kind of stuff that Alex Jones would. And um, he, uh, one of the very first things he did on his show, he just talked a little and played the Constitution in its entirety. And you know, if the president gets up each year and talks about the State of the Union, if he wants to tell people it's a true State of the Union, the only thing he has to do is to open up the Constitution and show people, hey, look, we should have a healthy militia. Where is that militia? You know, we should have healthy Second Amendment culture. It's being degraded and deteriorated, just as the NRA. You know, we should have healthy freedom of speech. When, when, when I come to America to, to you know, experience liberty and freedom as embodied in the word of god and the constitution and i go to tempe public library you know what i mean and, so there you go a, a, little a uh, strong second amendment culture he said if we lose that we're going to lose everything and uh, i've got a story when we get back from the break about this uber driver who was um using his second amendment rights to defend people imagine if someone would have been carrying a gun at this Pulse nightclub, and I know people are saying, oh, you can't drink and be at a nightclub. There's plenty of people who go to nightclubs and don't drink, okay? There's plenty of security there. I've been to clubs, well, bars, where there's a shotgun underneath the bar, and it's to deal with people who might get unruly when you have to uh, bring them back into line. So when we get back from break, I want to go over that article and then talk about, uh, we're going to get into some Trump news, and I'm going to have the young man who uh, is basically becoming an internet sensation after taking down a Black Lives Matter Nimrod who just doesn't even understand what an immigrant is or what Trump's proposals are. No, he does not want to ship black people back to Africa. Sorry, Black Lives Matter, you're not going to win that argument. It's not going to happen. It's Rob Dew. Infowars.com forward slash show is for the free live stream. Check it out. So next time you get in a car with an Uber driver, you won't be doing that in Austin, though. Don't worry. But uh, because we, we've outlawed Uber because they wanted to take 1% of their profits and Uber as a corporation said no. <clears throat> and although Uber's doing some bad things, right now they offer pretty cost-effective ways to travel and uh, they're able to bring down our, uh, our drunken driving rates 14% here in Austin. Even the chief of police admitted that. So we had to do something to get that revenue back up. So outlawing Uber was the first thing they did. But here we have an Uber driver licensed to carry guns, shoots gunmen in Logan Square. Authorities say no charges will be filed against an Uber driver who shot and wounded a gunman who opened fire on a crowd of people in Logan Square over the weekend. The driver had a concealed carry permit and acted in the defense of himself and others, Assistant State's Attorney Barry Quinn said in court Sunday. The driver pulled out a handgun and fired six shots into the man Eduardo Custodio, hitting him several times according to court records. Uh, responding officers found the man lying on the ground bleeding. So they, It had already happened, okay? Like the, the shooting had already done, was done by the time the police got there. There's another great little tidbit you can get out of this uh, article right here that really pisses me off when people say, well, the cops are going to take care of it. Nothing against cops, but when seconds count, cops are minutes away. 
Um, the Uber driver was a 47-year-old resident of Little Italy, and he had, of course, had gone through all the proper training and uh, procedures to get his concealed carry permit and had his firearm owner's identification card. But here's just a great example of how a good guy with a gun stopped a crazy person uh, who got a gun regardless of the fact of how many laws you get to keep people from getting guns. How many people get drugs out there? Even though it's drugs are against the law, they still get drugs. We still manage to have a really bad drug problem in this country, even though drugs are against the law. It's going to be the same thing with guns. And our government's been caught shipping guns all across. Well, they ship them across the world. They ship them to ISIS. They ship them to Mexico. They ship them wherever they want, and it seems to be okay. And uh, so I want to play a, a short clip of this other interview I did at Bilderberg. And this one, I didn't put it up at the time. Um, I would forgotten about it because we had so much stuff going on. But this was the, uh, he's the editor of Infokrieg.tv, which is, stands for Infowars in German. And he's talking about how the precariat or the lower classes are going to be used to control the upper classes in this new system that's being put in place where everybody gets welfare. So here it is. All right. So one of the things they're talking about in here is this new precariat class, which is, I guess, one step away from uh, absolute um, uh, peasantry or something, absolute serfdom. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, according to recent numbers, 17% uh, of all European uh, working age people, 17% are without a job. And of course, you know, the American numbers, 100 million Americans without a job. So uh, there used to be a lot of talk about the proletariat, the working class, not making much money, but at least having a stable job or a stable work environment. But of course, these guys, they moved a lot of the production overseas. While some of these insider companies, they did not have to move overseas because it's oil business and banking stuff that stayed here. So um, obviously a lot of jobs are gone and they're talking about this new low class and what to do with them. Because at some point they might get smart, they might get organized or whatever. So um, their idea is the basic unconditional income. The Sw uh, Swiss people just voted it down. It was a big vote a few days ago. And it was about revamping, completely changing the social security or social system. Yeah, so giving each person like 2,000, 2,500 Swiss francs a month. Is that what you're talking about? Well, it's, it's, it's different in each, in each country when it's proposed. But I think it was, uh, uh, yeah, that high in, in Switzerland. But of course, living costs is higher in Switzerland. Other countries have said it would be more like 800 euros. And it could be 800 euros to 1,000 euros in Germany. So instead of having all these different payouts, these different payments, you get one payment for everyone. So that way they can prolong the secure social, uh, social uh, welfare system because it gets cheaper. You don't have to hunt every dollar. You don't have to hunt every euro. You just have a fixed amount of money paid to every person each month. So you can pay the rent, you can pay, pay your Netflix, everything. So that, that's for uh, one thing is to keep the, the new low class, the, the precariat happy with that. You get food, you get, you get your, your rent paid. And so the precariat will defend the new order. Mm. And also we've seen um, uh, companies announcing they're going to return to Europe and return to America with their production, like Nike or uh, Adidas. They've announced they bring the production back home, but it's going to be robot factories. So not a lot of jobs here. So more people in the precariat, more people to keep happy, more pe uh, people to keep into the system they're going to defend. because. Imagine taking so going to someone and saying, you know, we need to change this. You know, you, you shouldn't be getting this free money each month. But it's going to be cool. You can watch the full video on the Alex Jones channel. It's how the elite will use the poor to control you. And it is the, the new systems they're going to set up. They're going to give away free money, as they say. But it's going to have a lot of strings attached. That's Alexander Benesh from Infocreek.tv. Watch the full video and educate yourself so you can educate others. It's all part of the info war because there's a war on for We're your on mind. The march. Black people are racist. Yeah. That's sad. That's real sad. He's against you. Why will you why will you support a racist? He's gonna send you back to Africa. That's what he said. He said send Mexicans back to Mexico. You you are just you, you are a disgrace to America. For being a young black man supporting a racist. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that is awesome. That's sad. 
is also. How does your parents feel about you holding a Trump thing? Oh, Where they disgrace to America too, because he doesn't like you or your All parents. All my friends are immigrants. You didn't answer my question. Yeah, you didn't answer our question. And they're happy. What has he said? He said send Mexicans back to Mexico. No, he said. He said Mexico. don't let Muslims here. Yeah, he said. Why? He's, are you going to let me talk or are you going to yell? No, I'm telling you because oh, you're oh, yeah, you holding this Trump thing and you so need to be taught. We can't have conversation, can we? We cannot do that, right? And then oh, okay, okay, okay. Telling you well, against your own people. She just graduated high school, so she's not a kid no more. Okay. I, I what would you tell him when a racist tell send Mexican back to Mexico? What would you tell a young black man? I only believe that he's going to send illegals back. I yeah, exactly. He said in your way, he said. send Mexican back yeah, to Mexico. He said illegals. Just illegals. Illegals. illegals only. And Please. He's, he's his not wife illegal. is not he's legal. legal. She's from Europe. She's legal. legal. How is she? Well, she was born she has, in Europe. Has, okay, why would, she, she, why would her husband be running for president? If but she, she has U.S. citizenship. So that, that's just because she was born in another country does not mean she has a legal okay, citizenship. That's, 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 that's fine. You, you don't have to. You're a real lad. If he's and elected, I can say the same thing about you, with, she's she's born in Europe. That makes her illegal. This guy has a very small grasp of reality. And I would say he's the one who uh, who is a racist. He's wearing a Black Lives Matter T-shirt and uh, obviously rejecting all lives matter. So there's the video right now. It's got a, over a million views on our YouTube channel. Probably, I think on our Facebook post, other people grabbed it on Facebook. And it's got millions of views on Facebook. Just a young man. His name is Quaterius Manuel. And uh, is it Manuel or Manuel? Quaterius, how are you doing today? I can't hear him. All right, we're in that we're in that nebula zone. I'm not getting any audio. Hello. There you are. How's it going? Hey, how is it going? Pretty good, pretty good. So, do you see how it works? Just by standing up and just standing there and letting the opposition talk themselves into a hole, you could really make these people look like fools. Yeah, that's right. And so, had 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 you been sparring with this guy verbally before, or did this just all happen spontaneously? So um, I woke up, obviously, you know, the night before I learned out that Trump was coming to Atlanta. So I decided I wanted to come to go see Trump because he's my candidate, as you can see. And so I went in line with my friend Brett and I and Callie and Mallory. So we were sitting there and then the guy came to us. He approached us and he just started attacking us verbally. And then we 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 tried our best to inform him on on issues and he obviously did not know he called the kkk the kk he didn't know what legal immigration was it was just insane so yeah it, yeah I, mean, I think the funniest thing was that he wants to ship guy. black people back to africa that to me was one of the funniest statements i've ever heard from a grown man uh, and he's not calling shipping anybody back he's just said, people who've broken the law illegal immigrants he's saying hey we have to have a system. We have to ship these people back. He goes, we may even allow them to come back in, but we have to clean, kind of clean the slate before we can deal with what's going on in this country. And right now, it's crazy. The border's wide open, the southern border. They're saying there's more illegals pouring over the border now, uh, this year already, than all of last year. And last year was a record year. Yeah. Um, like I said, like, I mean, these liberals, they just want, they just want free stuff. And, 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 and Trump is not buying it. He's not buying it. We're not going to continue to let our country come. We're not going to continue to let our country go the, go to the ground when Trump is our president because he's going to stop illegal immigration. And people don't want to hear that because they know when, when he gets in office, America going to be great again. Great again. And the liberal media does not want America to be great based off conservative values. They want America to be great based off liberal values. And that's just and that's just it. And I would I, agree. And I'll lump the Republicans in there with the Democrats who who like illegal immigration because the Democrats like it because it creates a big voting base and the Republicans like it is because it creates a form of cheap labor that they can exploit. And I, I say shame on both these groups, shame on exploiting people because it, in addition to just bringing people in as, as uh, cheap labor, you're, all, you're how many people are dying just to make that journey because they think there's a glimmer of hope that they can get in? How, how much of the drug trade is fueled by this, the coyote trade? I mean, we're keeping really bad people in power and in money, uh, well financed, just by allowing this system to continue. Exactly the rate. I mean, look at all these illegal Mexicans. They come in here, and and I I was um I don't know if you know anything about Georgia, but I was in Dunwoody, and then I saw I was out there playing soccer with my friend, and then we noticed some um, Hispanics come up to us. I'm not 
I'm just doing what I'm just profiling, you know, based off what information I was getting using my contest clues, something I was taught to do in third grade. But um, so I, I used them. I asked them and they, were, they first of all, they didn't know any English. And I was like, well, how old are you? He's like, I'm 15. So, like, OK, what school what do you go to? You know, I'm, I'm 16. I want to know what school you go to. So we're not going to school yet. We're just working. I was like, so how did you get here? So I got here two weeks ago. It's like, how? He was like, he was like, he just he didn't get couldn't give me answers because he didn't learn English. So I just assumed he was illegal. I was like, where are you from? He was like, well, my cousin's from Mexico. I'm from Guatemala. And I said, well, well, why are you here? He was like, you know, we we come here because we it's better opportunity. I said, well, are you legal? Do you have ID, a citizenship, or anything? He was like, no. And then that's when some more started coming towards me. And you know, basically, I think it was one guy. He knew a little English, and he asked. He was like, why are you confronting my friend? I was like, because he's illegal. And I don't and I don't agree with legal immigration. So long story long story short, we ended up reporting and got to the police offices and the police um got the guy in custody. I don't know anything about him now, but yeah, I mean it just shows you how how much they come over. They're they're making their way to Georgia now. So there was a report last week of uh, an eighteen wheeler driver who just stopped in the middle of at a rest stop and uh it was on his way, I think, to um some some other city. He was he was coming from El Paso. He stopped in the middle let out a whole truckload of illegals and they were just wandering around the truck stop. They didn't even know where they were. I mean, th this is not right on so many levels. So people who sit there and say illegal immigration is good, it's not doing anything. It's not helping any side of the equation. And it's also driving down our, our, our wages if people want to look at it that way. But what, uh, Quiet, what got you into Trump in the first place? What, what really attracted you to him? So originally I was, I've been always Republican. Um, I grew up in a conservative home, obviously in Georgia, suburbs of Georgia. Um, I did not like Trump at first. I'm out of the dislike him. He was my second option. My number one option was Ted Cruz because I thought Ted Cruz has conservative principles that I was for as far as like free market, stuff like that. That's true conservative on the economic side. You know what I mean? So, and I thought he had this, this great Christian belief because I am a individual Christian. I love Christianity. That's just my religion. And I thought Ted Cruz was the closest guy to Reagan. That's what I thought. And then I thought Ted Cruz spoke to the people. I thought he was more than just a politician because he was the outsider. I mean, like, I don't know if you knew, but everybody knew that Ted Cruz was not liked in Washington because they didn't like his ideals. And so I thought he was the guy that I needed to take on Washington with his conservative values. Values, And then and then once he dropped out, when he lost Indiana primary, I was devastated. You know, I was like, oh, my God. It, it, and then also what made me influence my decision, if you saw the latest polls of CNN and Foster coming out, Ted Cruz is beating Hillary by over like 11 points. And Donald Trump was losing to Hillary by like 16. So I was like, well, where is Donald Trump path to, to, to winning um, the presidency? So I thought about that too when I was picking my candidate at first. And anyway, so Ted Cruz, I had Ted Cruz and he dropped out, I was a little lost. So I took a two week break from politics. And then I started researching into Donald Trump. And I started researching into why liberal media portrays Donald Trump this way when he's really not. I mean, he has some of the biggest black supporters. You have Herman Cain. I mean, you could just go on and on, but that's just one big guy. And, and I looked into it, I was like, he's not this person. So why are the media doing that? And I thought Donald Trump had a chip on his shoulder. And I thought, I'm going to support this guy because, for one, he's a GOP nominee, so I'm going to support the nominee. I'm not like, I have so much respect for the Bush family, but I don't understand why they would not support the GOP nominee when it wants against Hillary. And I'm that guy that's like anyone but Hillary. And then I like, I fell in love with his policy. I'm like immigration, education, getting rid of Common Core, et cetera. So. Yeah, and he's got a pretty favorable uh, economic plan. Uh, a lot of people have looked at it and said, this is the. This plan is going to put money back in everybody's pocket, his uh, tax program. He's also come out and said he wants to save Social Security and Medicare, which I think is a, an issue on both sides. People want to see yeah. how it can be saved. Obamacare is the worst thing that could ever happen to America, and he is going to repeal that. Yeah, so. yeah it's, it's amazing the way um, the, the system has all lined up on both sides, and they're afraid of Trump. They don't want to see him win, and it makes you wonder, why is that? What What is so scary about a guy? Oh, and they put out arguments like, oh, he's not a politician. He hasn't been in politics. We've had enough of politicians as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And um, and like, like well, that's a good point, because right here in the state of Georgia, we had a politician and governor, Nathan Deal. And 
every time you think we have a great politician, they always eventually sell out. Look at Marco Rubio. He sold out to, to Florida. He sold he sold out, sold himself out to, to Washington for Florida. I mean, look at um, Governor Hill. He sold the state of Georgia out for some money from, I mean, all these politicians, all they, John McCain, he's been selling Arizona out for forever. I mean, all these politicians, all they do is sell out and they just get their money and they don't even care about the people. I want somebody who I'm proud to say I'm president. And, and I love George W. Bush, but there is nobody I think I've ever been proud of the most besides Ronald Reagan ever since he's been in office. I wasn't even born at that time, but I know my parents, they, they love him. And I looked at his policies. He tore down that wall. He, he's done so much great things to America. And they took the heat and he took the heat for it. And I just think it's unfair that if you have like like good like you made a good point, you said I'm done with politicians. I think Trump is finally that outsider that we need because Ronald Reagan was an outsider. I mean, everybody knows that, you know. So well, it, it was bound to happen where people would get sick and tired of the same old system uh, of 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 just the same garbage coming down, the same talking points. Uh, the, the Republicans have their talking points, the Democrats have theirs. We would have never had, uh, you know, anything except Trump's come in and really kicked the system to the curve, especially with his political correctness. We also have your friend Brett, who was there online. I, I imagine he's the guy with the sunglasses and the curly hair. Yeah, he's that guy. All right, let's let's bring Brett up. And uh, but basically, uh, how did how did all you guys did you guys all meet at a Trump rally? You and your friends, or did you just decide to? How did that happen? So I was in line. I, I keep a Trump rally by myself. I caught an Uber to the Trump rally, right? And so then I, I got in line and I saw Brett's mom and then they started talking to me about why I support Trump and stuff and how they supported him. I looked over and I seen Brett and Brett looked like this high school student. So then I asked him what school he go to and things like that. So we just hit it off and then we just been friends ever since. And then we've been talking, we went inside the rally, saw Donald Trump, got an autograph. Uh, it's pretty cool. And then we, we just, we just been there, you know? And we, we took on those protesters, you know? Exactly. And and just on our channel, that video, and you had, I saw at least 15 other cameramen around you uh, filming that. It, you know, it got uh, a million views, with, you know, using an iPhone, an iPhone 5 even. Um, so that's the power of that debate can show and how, you know, when people basically kick themselves in the face with their talk, their ridiculously ignorant talking points, you know, it just shows how, look at that, uh, 1, 000, 000 views. That's just on one channel on one platform. And it's got, you know, millions of people now know your name. And, and just seeing how, you know, a young high school kid with his friends could just stand up to a guy who's, you know, if you want to talk about bullies, like, this guy probably and is a big bully he's file. Us. He's not even asking us. Yeah. Strap flat. And I asked him, I said, are we going to have an educated conversation? Are you going to yell at me? He said, no, I'm going to yell at you. I'm going to yell at you. And I said, wow, this is just shows your intelligence. You're going to yell at a 16-year-old kid who can't even vote. I just want an opinion. And then I just want to know why you don't like Trump. He can't even give me an answer about that. And he was so ignorant, dude. Like, he doesn't know what legal immigration is. Call it the KKKK. I mean, how the can KK. your parents be a part of the KKK when they were German immigrants? I don't get it, dude. I just don't get it. Well, and, and Hillary's on record and bill of supporting a known grand wizard of the KKK, which was the uh, senator in West Virginia. I forget his name right now. Um, uh, if you go on um, Robert Byrd. Uh, yeah. Yep. How, um, Hillary is actually um, endorsed by the KKK, too. People don't understand that. You can go look that up on Google's type in search engine. So, I mean, she's been endorsed. Like, and I'd say distinctly, CNN is just a free advertisement for Hillary. Like, it just is. It's, and and I, I look at the comments that people have been making about me on Twitter. I don't know if you see my Twitter, but by the way, you guys can go follow me on there. Um, I've, I've seen people on Twitter, and uh, they've, been, they've been coming at me. They're saying I should die. They wish cancer on me. And they, they wish, you know, they just say hateful things. I've lost my black card. I'm Uncle Tom. I'm a racist. I'm a. Uh, they just keep saying the Uncle Tom thing, also. But I find it funny because it. I feel like that it's amazing that young, young minorities that are Republican conservative people, it puts fear in these people by sharing their own opinion. Um, and, and it's insane because I. I 
I don't think that a 16-year-old should be taking this much heat for his opinion. I've took heat at school. I've been calling racist at school. But guess what? I'm going to keep fighting because people are going to understand the truth. The truth is, is that people are allowed to have their own opinion. And in the United States, it's okay for us to agree to disagree. That's the beauty of our country. And I think people need to understand that. They should not wish certain things on a person that just have an opinion who can't even vote. And 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 I and I love the support I'm getting. I'm getting so much support from so many types of people. People from people don't agree with me. I, I'm getting support from them. But I just I it's in, it's insane. But you can definitely go follow my Twitter account um, at Rich Problems Two Underscores. Um, it's pretty. It's a great Twitter account. I post my conservative values on there, and you can definitely defend me, or you can say. Hateful things about me. And, and let me tell you, it's grown exponentially since uh, since you've been on our show. We've got your friend Brett as well uh, chiming in now. Brett, how's it going? Pretty well, pretty well. Good. So, hey, what what attracted you to Trump? And then what what was your reaction to this whole interaction that was going on with this man calling you guys racist for just uh, holding up uh, Trump signs or wearing Trump T-shirts? Well, <clears throat> I think the thing that attracted me to Trump most was... Um, is that all this all this political correctness, all this uh, you know trigger words, hate speech, uh, safe spaces, all that? He came like he came out of all of that. You know, he he's a product of the extreme far left, and I think that was great because I am so sick of people telling me to watch what words I use and what I just and. All right, Skype seems to be breaking up. Some Maybe. of his policies. I know the foundation does, and I went to the Trump rally to hopefully learn more about him. So I'm sort of a newbie. Well, it's good. I, I like to see young people getting into politics no matter what side. I've been talking to young people all over this country, and it's a shame that the young, the really young ones uh, seem to be so into socialism. So it's a, a breath of fresh air to see you guys there. Brett, hang on. Quaterius, I know you have to go to work. Just like a good, uh, a good young man getting... Final segment of the fourth hour of Overdrive. I'm your host, Rob Dew. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then on Sunday, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then the nightly news every weekday starting at 7 p.m. Central. Sometimes we go longer depending on if there's a debate or something. Now, I haven't plugged all hour, so I want to get uh, get that out of the way right now. Alexa Pure Water Filters, 20% off at InfoWarsStore.com. And I've said it once. I'll say it a thousand times if I need to. You are a freaking idiot if you're not filtering your water. And uh, these Alexa Pure Gravity Fed water systems are great. I use, uh, I actually have uh, a different brand, one of the other brands that we sell here at InfoWars because the Alexa Pure just came out. But I've been filtering my water for about 15, 20 years. And I don't think my kids have ever drank anything but filtered water. And uh, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your family to get all the uh, bacteria, the disinfectants, the organic contaminants, the hormones, the chlorine, the fluoride, it all comes out with Alexa Pure water filtration systems. Those are 20% off. Also, the Tim Kennedy Special, 15% off Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, and Secret 12 at InfoWarsLife.com. We've been running a lot of Tim Kennedy videos. He's a UFC fighter. Uh, he's been on Muscle Magazines. He's uh, hunting Hitler in Argentina. This guy's all over the place, and he uses our three products, Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, and Secret 12, to help keep him at the top of his game and uh, you can check out our videos with him and Shane Steiner basically going ape over uh, uh, over any sort of man-made obstacle and non-man-made obstacle they can get their hands on those guys are two animals to say the least but great guys nonetheless final segment here with Quaterius Manuel and his buddy Brett I didn't get your last name Brett but um, we're gonna let you guys have the final word into why you know as high schoolers how much um, in, in your own words just tell me what is going on with the political correctness in your schools? What's it like? Just it's, teaching. Um, we, 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 we take so much hate. Like I said, I'm probably one of the most hated guys in my school because this guy who I believe in, I've been taking hate for it. Um, it it's so sad. It's like almost sometimes you like you just want to wish it like you're in like a small town where it's straight conservative people because you try to convince these people and you just get hated for it. But um, like I said, we're going to keep continuing to share our conservative values. Man, Brad's going to start a YouTube channel really soon. You can follow us on Twitter right now, which is Rich Problems underscore underscore, and we'll get our Twitter, um, our YouTube information there soon. So thanks Excellent. for having me on the show. And what about you, Brett? What kind of uh, hate are you experiencing just because of your beliefs? Well, recently on Twitter, um, I've just been getting death threats, you know, same, same old, same old. I really don't care about it. 
Um, I do notice a bias, like a, a, an extreme bias at, um, at my schools and uh, among the student population. And I, I think it's, I think it's ridiculous because sometimes like I'll, I wore my shirt, my, 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 my Trump shirt on the last day of school and people, no one had even started to like arguing with me until that point. So until I put on the Trump shirt, no one like talked to me. Wow. And then they wanted to argue with you, tell you how you're a bad you're person. Racist. You're of, just of such course, a racist. Yeah. <laughs> a hatriotist, as they like to say. Hatriotist. <laughs> <clears throat> so you guys are putting together a YouTube channel. I think that's great. Trump's bringing people together. He's creating jobs, uh, more YouTubes. There it is, Brett C. Uh, B. C. Catanella. Uh, mm -hmm. You can check that out there. And we'll put we'll put these at the uh, description of this uh, video. We're going to put up on uh, our the Alex Jones channel, which has over a million subscribers. And we want to thank you guys for showing up and being, you know, being just Americans and talking about Brett is your favorite Rush song, Free Will. I know you have a Rush poster in the background. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, uh, it's definitely Sigma Sex One Book Two. All right. There you go. Everybody's got their favorite Rush song. Hey, Rob, you yeah. just me on Twitter. I, I did. I found you on Twitter after all this. So I've got you on there and uh, we're going to put this interview out tonight. Uh, I've been called racist for liking Trump or 16-year-old racist for call for liking Trump. Ridiculous in this day and age when everybody's allowed to have an opinion unless it's not the opinion prescribed by the left. Well, thank you for watching. This has been the Alex Jones Show. I've been your host, Rob Dew. You can catch us every day from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Infowars.com forward slash show.